There, now everything looks good. All right. There, everything looks good. All right. Looks like we're alive. Looks like we're alive. Yes, cool. it looks cool. like we're alive and on camera. All right, excellent. We're alive and on camera. Well, all right, excellent. fantastic. Looks like we're live and ready to go. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Welcome to Fringeworthy, our episode one. Uh, my name is Mike Leader, and I am the GM for this game. So, um, before I get into explanations of what the game is about and its setting and the rules we're using, let's introduce our players, uh, one of which you know as a channel regular, and three brand new folks to Stolen Fires. So, let's start with Chloe first, since she is the expert. Excellent. Well, I am Chloe. Um, you may know me from running my She is the Ancient game at this time slot as of last week. However, I have returned as a player. And uh, should I get into talking about my character or just who I am? You can tell, us who, tell us who you are. We'll introduce characters in a little, in a little bit. Yep. I'm Chloe. Yeah. You know, like, um, like I've been playing RPGs for like six years now. Uh, but I'm excited to see this game from... That is, I don't know, 40 years old or something like that. Yeah. Fantastic. Bob, why don't you tell us about, a bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Bob. I'm uh, a gamer for 40 some odd years since this game was new, although I've never actually played it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Brennan? Hi, I'm Brennan. Uh, I also been have been playing RPGs for decades. I actually played Fringeworthy in the 80s. Uh, and so I'm very excited to be able to play this old school game again that I never thought I'd see anybody play. And last but definitely not least, Leslie. Hi, I'm Leslie. Um, I am predominantly a D&D &D 5e player, um, but I have played a number of things and I'm excited to try something new. Oh, excellent. Um, I'm excited to have you guys here because this this is fun for me. Uh, just to explain a bit about a bit about Fringeworthy and my history with it. Um, like Brennan, I, I've been playing Brennan and Bob. I've been playing for this is my forty first year of gaming. I know that's kind of a scary thought, but uh, I've been playing for a very long time. But I played Fringeworthy in the early '90s when its second edition came out. But like I so said, the original game in the setting was created by Tri uh, TriTech Games in 1983, and it was the first RPG to use the concept of a multiverse and alternate Earths for its setting. Now, you've seen this appear in other games since then, but they technically were the first to do it. The idea of humans discovering a gateway that gave them access to pathways and other worlds was so amazing that even Hollywood supposedly copied the idea. The game would spawn a second edition, like I mentioned, in the late 90s, and that's when I first got to play it with some friends who were brand new to me at the time, too. And we, we played in a campaign that went on for the better part of two years. Uh, and it was an amazing experience, and it's always sat fondly in my heart. And realizing that this year was the 40th anniversary of this game, I thought, well, what what better time to try and actually you know talk about it again and see if we can actually get a, get a feel for it and i'm glad these players have signed up for it i'm glad rob introduced to brandon who's played the game before now speaking of the game uh we are not using the system that came with the game the original game and it, the original game as well as the uh, second edition because by modern standards it's a bit clunky i mean it's 90 it was 92 you had thaco and you had percentage rolls it, it makes me twitch thinking about it so what we've done is we've sat down and we worked out utilizing Chaosium's a basic role-playing system, which if you play Call of Cthulhu, you know how that works. Uh, but it's a generic system designed to work with pretty much anything. And I picked that because it has a, a huge skills, uh, skill setup for players. And so you really kind of get the feel for what's going on in this, in this setting. Now, um, I'll explain the setting. Uh, in this setting, in our, our version of Earth in 2007, a Japanese climate research team working in Antarctica discovered an alien base that had been there for at least 5,000 years. One of their own, Sayumi, walked up a ramp and just disappeared before their very eyes. They didn't disappear when they walked through it. No one knows what happened. They continued working there, hoping that whatever happened would she return. And days later, she came back to the same spot with an amazing story of pathways to worlds and a starry void. And so after all this and what she had told them, they raced back to the United Nations. The United Nations quickly took oversight as Antarctica is a neutral territory. 
She explained to them that a tiny percentage of humans could walk these special pathways and that she had been given the task to find them by an alien creature that she had met had given her these special crystal keys that shaped like little pyramids. It looked like D4s. <clears throat> <laughs> but this creature has saved her life while out of these fringe pathways. And so it encouraged her to go back to her world and find more to come explore as if they were made to do. So it began the race to find the five millionth percent of our population who can actually possibly explore and find a way to help humanity save itself from a climate disaster. Yeah, that's uh, 0.00005% of the human population. So not many folks. And so this leads to um, some very interesting folks being uh, brought into the program, as you'll find out tonight. Uh, the special crystals that Simon brought back, they tend to glow in the, well, actually don't tend to, they glow in the presence of, of folks, folks who are now dubbed fringeworthy. And they're being shown around the world as special exhibitions to try and find anyone who fits this bill. And when you meet our PCs tonight, you'll see exactly what we kind of got. So three teams have gone out now, but the media hasn't been able to understand much as the UN's kind of kept tight wraps on the situation. But now with this special fourth team, which is made up of our PCs, they have the media has been given some access to talk to them to find out what's going on and to at least uh, give the public who's hungry for information about this crazy idea of going to different worlds uh, without rockets, uh, some information. So, if we're all ready, the first scene of this game begins in what looks to be a modified boardroom. There's a, de uh, there's a table with five seats on one, or four seats on one side, and one seat on the other side. There are cameras set up in that room, and there's a BBC logo that's been put up on the wall behind the one of the chairs. Sitting in the one primary chair is a woman in her mid-30s. Uh, she's actually well-known on the BBC network. Uh, her name is Nagam Chetty. And across from her sits four individuals, two women, two men. I'm oh, sorry. Three women, one man, right? Yeah. All looking very different in their own regards. We'll get to them in a minute. So, Naga reaches up and she says, Hello and welcome everyone to the BBC Live here at Hatsumi Base in Antarctica. The BBC has been granted special access here to help the public understand the fringe pathways and the concept of fringeworthy. These terms came to the public eye in mid-2007 with the discovery of the 10,000-year-old building locked into the ice here in Antarctica, built by some alien race. The location contained a scientific wonder that is only visible to one millionth of a percentage of humans, a portal that leads to pathways to other worlds. That means that these quote-unquote fringe where they could just be just anybody from any walk of life. So the UN has sent out three teams so far, and several of you are familiar with the first explorer, Sayuri Tana, and South London's own Colonel Gordon Conrad, who uh, <clears throat> trying to find pathways that led to other worlds and other portals. They brought back samples of technology beyond, even, or, beyond or even parallel to how things operate here. But now we've been granted access to the special 14 that's about to leave soon and venture out into what Colonel Conrad called fringe space. So let's... Let's let each of them introduce themselves, their name, what they do, and where they're from. So she motions to Chloe and says, well, let's just start ahead and start with you. Who are you and where are you from? And uh, what excites you about this special trip? All right. So I am playing uh, Lola, although she'll be introducing herself as Lady Platinum. <laughs> she is wearing this um, this fancy ball gown she, she is going for a red carpet look i i imagine that her that's that's uh, you know some of the fellow um travel some of our some of the fellow team might be rolling their eyes at this display of ostentatiousness because this is not how she dresses on a day-to-day -day basis you know but she goes ahead and you know and like winks at the camera and says well you can call me lady platinum you know, i'm from new york you know, I, well, I had a brilliant art career going on before this. In fact, you can find those on my Yahoo group. But, you know, 
that really, I have to say that art is about trying to capture the world as it is and leave your mark on the world. And that task becomes far more interesting when you have multiple worlds to do that with. That's a great way to put that. Thank you, Lady Platinum. She motions to the young man, played by Bob. Tell us about yourself. Oh, 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 is, is this is this on TV? Uh, yeah, you, hey, yes, you're on TV. Hey, what's up? Mesa represent. I'm uh I'm I'm Chewy. You can call me uh well you you can call me Chewy. And uh and uh yeah, I'm 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 happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Uh hey, it my mom's watching this. Hey mom. What do you what tell what, us a bit about yourself, what you've done. Oh, I'm Chewy and I'm from uh, Mesa, Arizona and uh and uh, 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 they told me that if I uh, if I, I I came to work for them, uh, they'd take me out of. Um, so 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 you see, my uh, I I got arrested, and it wasn't my fault, but uh, they wanted to put me in prison because there were some stolen cars in my uncle's possession. Uh, I didn't know they were stolen, but uh, apparently they were, allegedly. My do lawyer said just use the term allegedly, uh, and the cars were stolen, and um, they put me in jail. And then they said you're not documented, and we're gonna send you back to Bolivia. And I was like, uh, but I've never been to Bolivia. I don't know anybody there. I would much rather stay here, but I'd much rather not be in prison. And then this guy came to me and said, Hey, you made these locks, these rocks grow. We're gonna take you someplace else. We're gonna pay you a bunch of money and take care of this whole situation, and you just gotta work for us. And I was like, uh, all right, that sounds great. I'll go where you go. Uh, give me some money. I'll hire a lawyer for my mom. And that's why I'm here. So that that's why you're wearing your orange jumpsuit. That's not your orange jumpsuit? Uh, this is the orange jumpsuit they gave me when they put me on the plane. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. Well, good Good to know. Good to know. Um, you, uh, points to Brandon's character. So tell us a bit about who you are and what you do. And that way we know, you know, going into this, what to expect. So uh, I'll be playing uh, Sadie. Sadie is a 28-year-old um, uh, American Hispanic woman. She is really, really physically fit uh, to the sense of clearly being just a, a gym rat uh, fitness nut. Uh, and she will say... Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm Sadie uh, Sadie Miller. My uh, I'm here because uh, I went to the exhibition at the Louvre, and they had the crystal on display there. And they they tell me that uh, that's why they decided to talk to me about this. Um, I am a professional athlete uh, by trade. Before doing this, um, I. I've been a professional fighter for years. Um, before that, I played uh, pro basketball for the uh, Sparks in LA. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles. Uh, my father was in the uh, Air Force and was a uh, pararescue operator for years and years and then joined the fire department there. And so I was raised in Los Angeles. Uh, I've always really enjoyed physical sports and surfing and rock climbing and all that kind of thing before I got into basketball and martial arts and made those things my career. I am here because this seems like the most challenging thing that I've ever heard of. And I'm really excited to have a go at it and see how we can do. Okay. And fantastic. Thank you very much. And she'll motion that Leslie's character. So I see you're a captain in the U S air force. Could you kind of elaborate on who you are and, and, Tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I am Captain Cassidy Wagner. Um, I actually have, about a year ago, have moved on from the Air Force and was recruited by NASA um, to be an astronaut um, and have been training for about a year. But apparently, um, they would like people from NASA to go on these kind of missions. So they came around with the little space rocks and... What do you know? That makes sense to me. 
So just a couple of questions for the audience for me for each of you. I just want to make certain that uh, they get to know, you know, what this is like, how this makes you feel. I'm sure. So, uh, Lady Platinum, uh, how do you think your special set of skills can help you on your mission to gather data for the people of the uh, for the people of Earth? I think uh, I think she leans forward and says, "Like I, I know, I know that." that you know you go to school you hear all about you know joining stem programs study biology or chemistry become a doctor or a lawyer but listen we are going to places that no one else has ever seen and you know what you know what you can't bring video cameras recorders yeah i'm sure you've he heard the stories but you know part of my big role will be to help document everything that we find after all yeah you know, you know, if we kind of ca like the way that I am able to portray what we see will be how all of you at home are going to be able to experience just just what lies beyond. Yeah. On top of that, I would say I'm a pretty good talker. I'm pretty good getting to know people. And, you know, some of these worlds have other people living their own different lives. Oh, you, you make up you make a good point. Uh, two good points, actually. I, I'm really curious. I, I, I've just only heard this a couple of times, and you mentioned it now that uh, you can't take video or, or that kind of data through through the portals. So that's definitely going to make uh, bringing back information kind of tough. So I guess having an art salon makes a lot of sense. That's that's very good, and we're lucky to have that. You know, your other point about meeting other societies uh, made me think about a question I have. Let's let's just go with you, Chewy. Uh, you know, our, our one of our one of our other sources told us that there was a previous contact with another society in a different world. How do you think you'll handle meeting a whole new kind of people for the first time? I mean, they could be completely different from us here on Earth. What? what how do you think that would? That, how does that, does that make you feel? What do you think? How do you think you'll handle that? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, uh, I, I hadn't thought that far ahead, but uh, you know, like. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure they're cool, right? Like, like, uh, I'll just be, Hey guys, what's up? And, uh, and maybe break some bread, you know, uh, give them some tortillas or some tacos and, uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody's cool. I mean, that makes sense. Everyone likes tacos. So who doesn't? So, um, <clears throat> Sadie, what strengths and weaknesses do you think you bring, bring to this team? as you face the unknown? Well, I, um, I feel like uh, one of my strengths is that I don't give up. And uh, this seems like a challenging thing to do that will require us to perhaps face difficulties in, uh, in what we're going to do. Uh, but I think most of all uh, that we're going to have to stick together as a team and support each other. One of the things that I've always been taught uh, the way that I was raised was that you take care of each other. When people need help, you help them, that uh, you look out for everyone. And when you have to extend yourself to take care of other people, you do that because you hope that they'll do it for you someday too. And so uh, although we, you know, I, I fight for a living, but uh, I never fight to hurt people. I fight because it's a challenge, because it's competition, because we all need to find something that's difficult for us to make ourselves better. And uh, I hope that that's how this will all go. Great. That's good to hear. So, uh, Captain, uh, with this great chance to help humanity, uh, there has to come some great danger. Uh, what concerns do you have about this mission and what hopes do you have to find out there in the fringe? I, well, I mean... Finding uh, another group of life forms, I think, is kind of the thing we've all been looking for, whether it be uh, going to space to find them or going through these cool little portals. Um, as far as dangers, who's to say? We know that um, once we go through the portals, anything electronic will no longer work. Um, so not having things that we may rely on is going to be a challenge. Um, going back to manual tech is going to be a whole lot of fun. It's like camping. 
That's a good way to put it. I like that. Well, you know, I appreciate the time that we've been given today to talk. And, and we I, I know when I speak for my home and for everyone else around the world who's watching, that we wish the, the four of you all the best. And we hope to hear back from you soon and get updates on what's going on. And maybe we'll have some good success out of this that can help us survive longer. And Because one of the biggest concerns we've had lately, and I'm sure you've been talked about it before, the UN's looking for better food for people, solving world hunger, climate issues. Maybe there's something out there that can help us that we, we, that we, can, we can have or find. So our hopes and dreams go with you. Our prayers as well. We thank you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Good night. And of course, cameras go dark. Red lights go off. And um, she's she gets up. She shakes hands with all of you. Offers her hand to shake hands. You know, we do. I do really wish you a lot of luck on this. I mean, I I don't think I could ever do this. So, what you're doing is pretty brave. So, good luck. And she. Ex Hmm? But of course, we'll be excited to come back with updates. So you guys get escorted from the room, and um, one of the assistants says that the that Colonel Zabregniev wants to meet with you. You haven't met with him yet. You've heard he's the big to do shot around here, who apparently is in charge currently. He worked for the unit uh, uh, for for a peacekeeper unit many for many years in the UK as well as in Europe. So he's got a lot of experience with them, and they put him in charge of this thing recently. Uh, so they escort you to his office, including Chewie in his jumpsuit. Are you still wearing the handcuffs? No. Okay. But you have the handcuffs. I have the handcuffs. They okay. just gave them to me after they took them out. They took them off of me and they just handed them to me because they didn't know what else to do with them. <laughs> so they walk you into his makeshift office. And it's funny to think, we'll just describe the base. The base is massive. Uh, most of it is 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 our alien walls. The metal you quite understand. It's not cold to the touch, but it feels the room doesn't feel as cold as it should be for being Antarctica. The room feels warm, or just warm enough, like close to about seventy to seventy three degrees. It's a nice, comfortable day at the beach, right? Or you know, summer in Alaska, <laughs> but nice for you to, to walk around in no a problem. But this office has been, been dug out of the ice and built for him, and it is rather cold in there. So in the office sits a man who is probably in his mid fifties. Um, he's got some scars on his face. He looks tired and and definitely exhausted from a lot of things. But he stands up when you come in and says, "Good, good, come in, come in. I, I I'm glad I get a chance to speak to you. We're gonna try and get this group off the off the ground as fast as possible." Uh, again, my name is Colonel Zabregniev. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. I read your files. Uh, I'm going to just kind of give you the things you need to know going out onto the paths, what we want from you and what we want to give, what, uh, what your orders will be from us. Do you, you understand? Well, we are not, well, this is not a military operation. The military is kind of overseeing things. And so we want to give you, we, as in the United Nations, want to give you some directions while you're out there. Makes sense? Makes sense? All right, good. Good, good. So here, just go down the list. Um, let's see. Pulls out a piece of paper. Um, so I want you to explore to find resources that can be shared with Earth. So things like uh, food, water, uh, things that can help the problems we're having here. Hopefully some science that can help with climate issues we're having, um, food issues, trash issues, things like that. Yes, yes. Um, Number two um, actually was added because of what happened with uh, the second team. Um, please do not interfere with local cultures as much as you can. They almost started a war with a different planet, and that's never a good idea. I'm sure you understand. So we ask you to use uh, discretion. I, I think um, I think Lola whispers under her breath in Spanish. And sure, the peacekeepers used more discretion. <laughs> Thankfully, he doesn't speak Spanish. That works out okay. Oh, that's convenient. That's okay. We all do. I know. Yes. <laughs> so, it's, 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 
It's relatively simple, you know. We we but we again we trust your judgment. We just want don't want you um, getting involved. It can be pretty dramatic. So um, also, do not let any hostile forces reach out and attack Earth. I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm sure you'll know them when you find them. If you find them, let's hope it's just an if. But you know how we think. And uh, one of my higher ups mentioned that uh, what if it's a bridge for other races to invade our planet? And it's a valid point. So just keep that in mind. Um, last but not least, um, we did not make it known to the public, but I'm telling you now, the third team has not gotten back to us. We have not heard anything from them. They're not reported back in. And that is a great concern. So hopefully you can find out where they went or what happened. Um, there were four of them just like you. Uh, Colonel Polina Volkov um, from the Russian army. Um, Eloise Lagrand, uh, she's a biologist. Um, and Oteshi Ai, <laughs> the Japanese um, Olympic acrobat. Very nice, very nice gentleman too. I liked him a lot. And Peyton Maxwell, um, he's from America. America, he's, um, I don't know what he did. I think he was a bum. But, you know. Anyway, if you if you can find them, um, there's some descriptions. I think, it, yeah, I think Lieutenant Yates will send that out with you. So, uh, um Anyway, uh, I'm going to have to give you over to Lieutenant Yates, and she will take care of everything to get you set up. But you should be able to leave sometime tomorrow. Yes? Any questions for me? Are we going to meet aliens? Well, um, I haven't been out there myself because I'm not fringeworthy, but uh, Sayumi said she met one, and so we know they exist. So, uh, like I said, Tom be on your best right. behavior. I'm I sorry. Are they going to probe Tom us? Tom was right. <laughs> well, maybe just don't don't argue not, with them. Maybe they won't probe you. I'm not into that. I just want that on the record. Not into that. You know, probing thing. I'm sure if you tell them you're not into it, they'll be fine with that. All right. As long as it's on the record. Um, of course, of course. Any other questions for me? All right then. Um, presses a button. Uh, Captain, Captain, uh, Lieutenant Yates, come in, please. So a woman comes. A uh, woman comes in. Uh, she takes you out, and is walking over to the main portal area just so you can see what it's like. Um, we got all of the equipment that you requested. We gave the list to you, and I think everything you wanted should be on it. We've packed up uh, the main truck as well as the uh, Humvee that you have. And uh, if you have any questions about it, you can let me know. Small thing is I can probably make changes right now for what we have in base, but you should be good to go for tomorrow morning. Well, I'll be present and we're gonna make a big deal about it. You know, the, the media will be here, yada, yada, yada. You know how that goes, right? But yep, shoot. I'm well aware. Uh, Mike, this is after we've had, you know, like our couple of months of training oh, yeah. you've, and getting You've gone in. through months of training, yes. She'll reference that too. After your months of training, this should be really easy for you to understand, you know, the way Siami and Conrad made it sound that this should be a walk in the park for you. And uh, since again, you're more physically active than the two of them were, so between all of you, I think you should do fine. Um, she walks you into the main room, and the room opens up this massive room. And in, over across the room, it's equipment everywhere, video cameras, blah, blah, blah. Um, not a lot of machinery, but stuff and crates are placed in here. You can see the massive Russian truck that you've been given, as well as the Humvee, which look really weird because they have the mechanical start crank on the front of both of them, which you've never seen in a vehicle in your lives. But they're loaded to, loaded to the brim with all the stuff you guys have requested and was going to be given to you. But more importantly, across the room, up against um, the ice wall, you can see it. It's 50 feet tall. This giant black ring. And it's not just black. It's nothing. Black, black so deep that it's beyond that color. And you can see it slowly turning in a clockwise manner, very slowly. 
but you Why can didn't feel it. Turn it around? Feel. You ask that question out loud? Yeah. What do you mean? She says, what do you mean? Why did do, why does it need to do that? I mean, shouldn't it just stay still so you can go through it? I I don't know what you mean. I can't see it. Oh. Uh never mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if they, I don't know if you were explaining in your briefings. Only um fringe where they can see the portal. Otherwise it looks just like a ramp to me. Oh. Uh, I, uh, out of character, I thought there was like a ring and then the blackness was within it, but it's just the black disc. That's it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. The platform itself is rather large, the ramp up to it. It's a platform. And so it's made, it's made of metal that you, that same kind of metal that the building is made out of. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little bit corrugated. So when you put your, you put your foot on, you can feel it's got traction. It's not mm -hmm. slippery, but it's rather big, and this thing is fifty feet across. It's not like it's a it's a it's a tiny platform. It's a fifty foot across platform. It makes the Stargate and the Stargate TV show look small. Is the ramp up to it um, part of the construction of this uh, that was here with it, or is it something that was installed to let people walk up to it by us? No, it's part of the building. It's the same metal made of the, the building is made out of. Huh. If you look, it's actually part of the floor. Oh, this I think is... Lola is busy sketching out, you know, like, um, you know, like first encounter or something like that. She's workshop and titles. If you look over, like all of us look very slightly taller and more muscular than we actually <laughs> are. Nice. Yeah. But the interesting thing about the chamber too, the, the disc feels almost like it's calling to you. This is the first time you've seen it, and uh, it just you can, you can feel it in your chest, like you you want to go touch it. Hmm. So we're just gonna walk through there. That's the we're gonna get in the truck. Well, we're gonna get in the truck and we're gonna drive through there. Now that that's... and she says that's that's the plan. And this is most of what we've ever sent out with anybody. So. Uh, even Team Three didn't take that much. They took horses and a and a pickup truck. Hope that worked out well for them. Chewie I like is those far horses. Far more interested in the truck and the Humvee than anything else. You you would never Chewie would it, it probably has never seen a Russian built military truck before, but just poking it from the outside, it's 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 amazed how solid. You should be amazed how solid it is. Like this thing could run through houses. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big truck. Can anybody drive one of those? It oh, well, it's got can't wheels. Can't be much can different drive than driving a tractor, right? It's got wheels. I can drive it. Trust me. All about the cars. Yeah, it it's uh, it's just like any truck. It's a manual transmission, uh, which cuts down a lot of problems with taking it this place like that. You're about to use the manual start to start the truck, as well as the Humvee. Um, once the battery drains. So there's at least that. You can at least get the vehicle going on the platform. I mean, I'm assuming we've been briefed on the operation of these things and how to do the push start. Right. You you know how that and Humvee work. You, 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 you've you read all the all the specs on it. I'm just kind of going over for the audience. So uh, just I just wanted to show you this before you went off tomorrow so you can feel comfortable before in front of the media, yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. It's real simple. Any questions for me or anything else I can get for you guys before we get this thing started tomorrow? I mean, I, I assume you'll have uh, some kind of special astronaut breakfast for Cassie. Uh, is that a is that the thing, right? I mean, I mean, eggs and toast are fine. I uh, you should have enough food. You should have enough MREs for ninety days, so that should be plenty. Um. Please make sure to try and eat um, eat well. Hopefully, you can find foods you can eat out there. I mean, the way that uh, Sayumi made it sound is that there are world food on them that she could eat just fine. She talked about these. Um, they're like oranges, only they were green, but they smelled like uh, smelled like strawberries. So that's too I many get, things. Yeah, well, you know, I I I don't know. 
I'm just taking your word for it. Huh. Uh, and we okay. uh, we talked before about um, uh, going after Team 3, um, and we have some idea where they went. So that could be where we want to go first. That That's a good plan. Um, one, I know that the plan was to have them go right at the alternate platform, the second platform, the one out to go out. Go out on the platform. You go out to the next platform. Make it right. If I can give me directions to the Pizza Hut. Jeez. Um, yeah, it, it's what what the designated is negative one. So you go out and you mm -hmm. go to the right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's probably our top priority to go find lost people. I mean, if it was us, I would hope that the next team would come after us and try to find us. Yeah. Yeah. Seems as good a place to start as any. Yeah. Especially if they found things, then we can at least bring back their work. And their horses. <laughs> I'm, I'm not optimistic for the horses, to be quite honest. Uh, horses survive because they're scared of everything. They just run the other direction. They might be okay. Um, Lieutenant Eats also adds, I know the colonel wasn't very clear about this, but like I said, you've only got food for 90 days. So we hope to hear back from you within that period of time. Between you four and me, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I know... Uh, that sounds a little silly coming from me, but if you have to understand that we sent out professional soldier, uh, Corporal Volkov, and they didn't make it back last time. And so it makes me very concerned for your safety. So please try not to get any gunfights. Try not to get any, do anything stupid. We want you to come back alive. We're going to try and find more fringeworthy in the meantime, but it's kind of up to the four of you to make a difference here. Not to put any pressure, but yeah, I'm putting pressure on you. The other teams came back, right? It's just the third team we're still looking for. Yes, the first two teams came back, but they didn't. They didn't. They didn't, they didn't explore as far out as you're going. I mean, at best, you're gonna be what, three hundred miles from home, or in the middle infinitely of infinitely far. However, you see it. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, it's all different out there. And I, I wish, I wish Colonel Carmer was here to talk to you. Uh, that would have made a better, made a better difference if you asked me, because I, I haven't been on the pathways. But everything he told me, he said, just you're going to be surprised. So, who's up for dinner? Dinner sounds good. Yeah. Oh, 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 I am famished. Famished. And we gotta get you with you a change of clothes. Famished. Because that jumpsuit is not we need to put you in the right clothing. In fact, uh, I think I got uniforms for all four of you, so let's get you into those too. Don't worry, it's nothing fancy. Wait, we didn't wear uniforms for the interview? I feel I, I, I feel so so uncassidy right now. <laughs> you may have wore your original clothing, but uh, they haven't given you the IDIT uniforms. But I was bigger they give it to you the night before because Chewie wasn't wearing his clothing yet. Chewie was wearing clothing, just not the clothing we wanted him to wear. You know, I think it helps bring attention to the need for immigration reform. Yes, exactly. What she said immigration reform. Wow. It <laughs> says. Think of the ramifications of that. What if you find nice aliens and they want to come visit, or 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 move here? They can come and stay with me and my mom. I'm okay with that. I have heard I, about I, your mom's tamales. They do sound good. They're really good. They're really. Oh, let me tell you all about my mom's tamales. They're so good, so good. Lieutenant Yates is going through an existential crisis at this point, trying to think of what she just said. The immigration. Oh, no one's thought about that. We'll have to start a new bureau. We'll have an idea. 
All right. Well, so uh, dinner and uniforms. Let's go. And she takes you off to, it's not the best food in the world, but you're hungry, so it works out. Um, Better than prison food. Yeah, she gets you the IDET uniforms, which are standard camo outfits with the IDET logo patch on the side, which is not a very fancy logo, but hey. And IDET stands for? Interdimensional Exploration Teams. ID, interdimensional, like two words. (laughs) Hey, look. I didn't design the logo. I didn't design the phrase. I'm using what came in the book. They really wanted it would to you, would, shield. Would, would you really want it to be IET? <laughs> I'm just saying. It's... It could have been worse. You could say I did with, never mind. It sounds like idiot too, but hey, whatever. So, oh, yeah, uh, of course, Sadie will, you know, Sadie is constantly exercising, you know, running and they have treadmills here. She runs miles every day and does push ups and chin ups and everything they'll let her do. So she's always, always hungry, always eating to maintain her build. Got to, got to stay fit, got to stay ready to go. It's funny, the military personnel here are all kind of happy to see you guys and they treat you rather well. You don't feel like a, um, uh, like, a like an outsider, like a civvy. They all treat you. Pretty much like they treat their own because you're doing something really dangerous that they have no concept of, and uh, but they've been briefed on it too, and so they get it's always you know oh no go ahead or you know I'll get that for you or good job hope hope, hope you know, we're gonna we're hope hope to hear back from you soon. Dead they're man really walking. kind about that. Yeah, it and you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's the dead man walking. Like these people are gonna die probably like the last group did. Chewie salutes people at random. <laughs> No idea who he's supposed to salute, so he just picks some um, anybody, especially tall, gets a salute. You're not, you're not supposed to salute anybody, Chewy. You don't, you don't have to salute them. You're, you're not in the in the military. I'm not. Isn't that what no. this is all about? Why they give I us mean, guns? Well, I guess because somebody might try to shoot at you. We got uniforms and guns. That's the military. They give you a uniform when you work at the sanitation company. Yeah, but they don't give they don't give the garbage man a gun. They gave me a gun and they gave me a uniform. Uh, That means I'm in the army. That means you salute people. I've seen it. I watch TV. Has has anyone seen if Chewy eats crayons? Because he's got he's got the M word written all over him. You gotta you gotta. I think you got a good point there, Chewie. <laughs> you should definitely salute the captain because you know she's a captain. You don't even have to. That's right, check captain. Out. <laughs> Mon Capitan. For those of you who haven't realized, um, Bob is playing Louis, Louis <laughs> from the MCU. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so, uh, does Cassie wear her uniform? Like, does she, does she wear her rank uh, on her collar and everything? Is that a thing? Or are you on some kind of well, detached duty? Because now I'm working for NASA, not the Air Force. But you don't lose the title when you retire. No, no you're still so, you're still your rank when you're working for NASA. You're yeah. Just, you're still Colonel Neil Armstrong or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. That's the part I didn't get researched well enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. It's okay. Um, Brandon, didn't you write a book on this? Shouldn't you know? I I did, is? in fact, write a book on the Air Force. My dad worked for NASA. but <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. Um, they'll, they'll, they want you guys to wear the, the IDET, IDET um, fatigues. It's just easier for you to manage there's other clothing you can take with you but for the press junket tomorrow at least wear these clo- at least wear these things until you until you've gone through the portal after that it's all you mm-hmm. sure what do the idea uniforms look like are they like jumpsuits or what are they uh, no I, 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 would, I would i would akin them more to army fatigues easy to I wear feel- easy to put on name tags and pa- name tags and idet patches yeah, Louis. Uh, yeah, Chewie does have a, have an outfit with his with a name tag and a special IDET patch on the side, so it's military to him. Yep. The Amy boots. Official Amy boots. Now you're going to have to polish those, right? I got a belt which they didn't give me in prison. <laughs> Made it hard to keep my pants up. That's why they give you a jumpsuit. So you don't have any pants. You had to hold up your jumpsuit. <laughs> 
That's a messed up jumpsuit. But yeah, okay. As soon, as soon as they give Cassie a you know a jacket and, and you know the first thing she'll do is take off her jacket, so she's just got her t-shirt on, just stretching around her her biceps. Fantastic. Is there, is there anything else before we switch to the next day? Did you want to prep beforehand? No, we should all get a good night of sleep. Big day tomorrow. Yeah. They insist on that. Sleep, sleep time. Okay. I think we'll... Lola over the night, you know, I think one, she is absolute, she is spraying her graffiti tag on the back of her jumpsuit. Um, <laughs> two, I think she, you know, I think she stays up later than she intends finishing that, that drawing of, you know, the four of us standing by the disc. I, I think, you know, I think she thinks, all right, it's a fairly realistic picture but when she finishes she steps back and it just has this weird effect of it's like looking at a um like a salvador dali painting like you have the black orb and just all of our figures are sort of sort of like skewed and warped as if they're being sucked into a black hole it's it's kind of it's mildly disturbing and she closes that and goes to bed it's like no more art tonight <laughs> 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 that's not ominous or anything wow okay so the next day um we'll just cut to um the big platform room again filled with media um all the major news agencies are there to uh, take video of this um they've been told not to talk to you <laughs> to let them go and uh let you guys go out to the equipment trucks and um are you dri you're driving i'm guessing you're driving the vehicles through are you all you riding in the vehicles? How do you want to do that? Are you going to walk? Um, I assumed I was driving one of yeah. the vehicles. I mean, two of us have other. to drive, right? Yeah. yeah. We've been I'll... training for a few months. Who's Who are our good drivers? I am an excellent driver. I am the best driver. I am amazing I... In behind the wheel of any vehicle um, with wheels on it. I am, I... I, am, I am Superfly TNT in the vehicle. I am, I am all about the driving. Are you actually a good driver? Yes, he's a he's fucking amazing. <laughs> All right, I'll take that truck through on like one set of wheels. <laughs> yes, man, don't tempt him. Well, um, I was assuming we would take we would drive the truck and we would tow the the Humvee behind it. But if somebody wants oh, to sure. drive, drive the Humvee, then no, it's one less vehicle to crank start. That was so. my thought: is I don't want to yeah. have to crank crank start two vehicles every time we cross a barrier. No, good, no, good idea, Chewie. I think that's exactly what we should do. Because as so it my is, question. drive this train through the wheat through the gate. Then on the other side, somebody who's very big and strong is going to have to get out and crank that crank. Uh, actually, I want to actually crank start the truck on this side to make sure it works. Oh, sure. So good, good you, choice, good choice. <laughs> you get out there, and then we'll do and, it again on the other side. But I want to want to test it just before we go through. You've never done this before, I and mean, you know you know they've told you what to do. No one since the 1920s has done this on a regular basis. You get to you're like, oh, that's actually kind of it's got it's got some it doesn't have any give to it. It's actually oh and oh, it took some energy to do that. And you get it going a couple times, and mm -hmm. the truck gets over. But it, it's you realize that if you did this wrong, you probably in a rush, you probably get hurt. Yeah, you, you, if it kicks back on you, you can you can literally break, break an arm on these things. Well, I'll uh, I'll keep that in mind when I do it to sort of hold it in a way that will allow it to kick away from me without taking my hand off. Uh, you know, maybe stand in a in a safer position than I was just to make sure next time I do it. Uh, Hopefully I, we'll never be in a situation where we need to wind it up quickly to get away from something. Never. Oh, well, that was a jinx if I ever heard one. Um, yeah, you know, most of the time it'll start. It'll already be charged. That's the hope. So my question for the group is, who is the first person to walk up and touch the portal to go through? Oh, I'm uh, in the truck, so... Fine. Won't be the truck. I, I guess I will. I'll be the brave and fearless leader. Okay. So as you guys are getting ready to leave, um, Cassidy walks up. And how do you touch it? You just put the finger? Well, I probably, like, put my whole hand. Okay. So you reach up to it, and you touch it. And what happens, what you guys see before... before what she sees are two different things. 
you feel you feel it. It's kind of cold to the touch, like pudding almost. Ooh. And then you, well, it just it's pre- salad. It's, it's a half second of like, oh, it's kind of soft, and then you feel it grab your hand and pull you through. There was no stepping through. It literally pulls you right there. So you see her walk up, touch it, and go right through it. Whoa! But you're you're pulled through, and I'm assuming the rest of you guys follow, or else yep. right, Chloe and yep. uh, Brandon, do you want to touch it to go through? Nope. Um, In Sadie the vehicle, will just basically run up to run up the ramp and jump through it. Like that's it even that's even weirder. As you jump. You, it's almost like you stop midair as you hit it, and it yanks you through. You feel it. it's not like your momentum's carrying you. It's like you stop in midair and it just pulls you through, All which right. is a really weird feeling. Aha! Ah! <laughs> as your center of gravity completely changes at that point. It was here. Now it's over here. And Chloe, are you walking through it or are you riding in the vehicle? Uh, I'll say Chloe. I- I'll, I'll say Lola goes in the vehicle. That way it's two and two. Okay. Um, and on the other side, we get out of the way. <laughs> and and uh, Bob, as Chewie pulls the truck up to it, like, okay, well, they went through, no problem. You pull the truck up to it. And Chewie, does, feel Chewie it. crosses himself and says a very pathetic uh, version of a of a prayer to St. Christopher. He, he doesn't actually go to church often enough to remember the right the right prayer, but he tries his best. Okay. <laughs> I think L- Lola puts a hand on his shoulder, and, and it's like, oh, "We got this." <laughs> and as the truck touches the front of the portal, it's like um, you've been on the roller coaster at Disneyland. We had launched an induction roller coaster. You get pulled forward. You get pushed back, mm-hmm. and it's it's only the same time you're pulled forward. Like you feel like, "Whoa!" It's not out of control speed. It's just that you just you weren't ready for the pull forward. And you guys roll through the portal. And now you're in this place that you've never seen before. It is so quiet. For those of you who are not in the truck, it is so quiet here. It's hard to describe. You're on this giant metal disc. Probably 600, 600 odd, 600 change feet across, if you're guessing. And there are portals just like the one you went through. In the different clock spots, I, I talked to this before at the the one, the uh, one, the two, the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, and the nine, the ten. And you know those are all portals into Earth. But as you, you pull the truck up on the thing, you guys are standing there looking. It's just so quiet. You've never heard it this quiet before in your entire life. You're all used to a place that is full of noise, twenty-four-seven almost, unless you've been in the Alaskan wilderness or far away from people. It's eerie. What's also odd. You've been outside at night. You really don't get to look at the stars. But this portal goes out to 600 feet and and just drops off. It's a big disc into nothing. There is nothing there but this giant black field of distant fuzzy stars that seem to kind of change color and wink and move periodically. It's not disorienting, but it feels weird. Coming through the portal felt a little weird to your stomach, but it's not cold. It's not warm. It's just right. It's a Is constant there a ramp on this side. There's or a ramp it... on this side, yes. Okay. And you see, all the other platforms have ramps as well. Do the discs on this side turn around? I'm sorry. Do the discs rotate here? Yeah, they all they all slowly rotate clockwise. Okay. It's really slow. And they rotate on the short axis, right? Not on the long axis. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they sure. don't flip like this. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a... okay. I just want to make sure. Um, uh, get out. Uh... And, somebody get out and start the truck. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm As already the, out. I'll start Well, it. the truck is still running. The, the battery dies. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh so, so the battery dies, but the truck continues to run. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, and you guys feel it, and there's all anything electronic you guys own is dead. Oh, I like this watch. Uh, <laughs> it was a digital watch, really? Your your Casio. Good old uh, good old uh, fourteen dollar Timex. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's dead. So, do it's we good know? Omega. You're an astronaut. Favorite's a favorite. 
No, you know, it's that one fifteen dollar Timex watch that you bought one time to work at summer camp and you've just had it forever now. And um do we know where team three went? Is there horse poop anywhere? No, no. Uh, you were told to go out the main portal to the right, which goes to the alternate portal setup, okay. and then to make oh, a right Oh, was that when she point. was doing the thing? And I was, oh. Yeah. yeah there's, that was uh, a Leslie wasn't quite paying attention problem, you not a Cassidy that, problem. Sure. You noticed that um, there are nine portals on this disc. Eight of them, the one, like the one you came out of, are all about the same size. The one at the six o'clock position is larger. Like it's some kind of hub or or main main leaving point. Yep. They went out yep. that way, and to the second platform that's out there, which you haven't seen yet, and they supposedly made a right, whatever mm -hmm. that means. So we should from this disc, we need to go through one more portal to another disc, and then we need to travel down a road from there. Is that right? That's what they made it sound like. Okay. Okay. So, so I don't have go, the map in front of me, but we did. We go look straight at it. across to the number six, uh, to the six o'clock giant portal. Is that the plan? Okay. Yeah, we're following Team Three's supposed trajectory. Well, look. Let's be clear. Chewie paid absolutely no attention in any of the briefings oh, yeah. about where we were going. He's expecting you to tell him. Nope. We have a copy of the map. All right. So we know where we're going. Uh, sure. Let's just yeah. So head right we... on through. All right. Wow, there's so, a lot of stars here. This is this is I I don't I don't I don't think I like this. I don't I uh, I yeah. Let's go someplace else. Another thing to point out: it, it it feels like it should be night, but it's not. It's like permanent twilight. So easy to see, but dark on the outside. But you can see that if you it, this and off the there's an edge of this disc. And then there's nothing. Yeah, let's go someplace else. Someplace else sounds good. Yeah, floor it. So okay, we're going straight across, right? To Crank door the truck up. Door All right, number whatever door they said. Mission the six. Yeah. Um, just for reference, uh, I think you guys. I think I gave you guys what the um, platforms look like. And I'll I'm gonna post that over in the Discord chat. For those of you who aren't on the Discord for Stolen Fires, I'm sorry, but we're, sp we're posting special information for players there. Ooh. And I closed the documentation. That's great, Mike. Good job. So let me fix this. Ah, <sighs> is I think Lola is looking around and says, "You know, I I kind of thought we were gonna, you know, end up on an alien planet and have some, I don't know, weird slime towers." I'm sure that's coming. This thing is fifty miles long. I thought we were gonna go like uh, you know to 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 to, to another planet, and there'd be like uh, purple trees and uh, and and spaceships and uh, and stuff like that. Uh, nobody told me we would be out here in the middle of nowhere in a whole lot of nothing, uh, and I don't like it. Yeah, this is the between part. You know, you come to these discs, and then there's these long roads that connect the discs and then you go through another one of these circles and then you go to the different place different planet all right we're let's in go. space yeah this is i don't like this and cassidy would know since you work for nesson you've got you understand astronomy um these these may be stars or lights you're not quite sure they don't look like any kind of constellations you know that's what i was gonna ask and they tend to um. move and change colors Oh, it's the the Neopets uh, acid. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to stare at that for too long. You can get lost in staring at that. Okay, so we'll just move this along, and you guys go up the secondary Ooh. ramp into the portal, and you pull out onto this massive pathway, and it just goes off into the distance. 
you can't see an end from this point. It just goes straight. But how it's, wide is it? Yeah, um, I believe it? they are. Oh, I had that information written down, and I don't know where it went. Well, that's stupid. Hold on. I only got like six thousand pages open. Give me a minute. I mean, the real Not question enough. is, how wide is it compared to our truck? Is it a challenge to drive the truck on it, or is it just really Here huge it and it's no problem? Uh, the fringe roads between platforms are forty-seven feet wide. Oh, that should be enough yeah, for the easy. truck. The truck's like twelve feet wide. Rather it'd big. Be easy so. to, yeah. It'd be easy to accidentally drive the truck off it, though. So be careful. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. no don't don't guardrails. Don't 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 worry. Chewy's don't, got there's this. a little guy in the cloud who will come and get us with Chewy's his fishing pole this. and this put is, us back on. This is this is a this is kind of like Mario Kart, uh, Rainbow Road. Uh, Chewy's got this. I have I have spent a lot of time on Rainbow Road. Punch it, floor it. Okay. Moving across this road as fast as I can in this big right. truck, which is probably like forty miles an hour. But forty-seven miles later. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Forty-seven across, forty-seven long. Huh. Weird. Um. You reach. You see another portal in the distance. You pull up the ramp. You go through it, and now you're on a different set. It looks a little different than that. Find another picture. Um, All right, so this is not Chewy's thought, but is it really forty-seven feet and forty-seven miles long? 47 yeah, they feet tell you, wide and forty-seven I it, miles. I thought long? it was forty-nine miles or something like that, close to that. That's ever forty-seven. Because 47. Th- that is fucking weird. If it was forty-seven meters wide and forty-seven kilometers long, that would make sense. But forty-seven feet by forty-seven miles—that makes no sense at all. Apparently, the aliens even is, hate uh, the metric yeah. system. Yeah, I mean, the, I don't a, think aliens aliens use the imperial system. I don't think it's exactly <laughs> forty-seven miles. I think it's just ish. Uh, um, if you get a, if you get a chance, if you're part of this and part of the Fallen Fires, you can look at the box seats to see the pictures of the platforms. Just so for reference, same for players, you want to go to the box seat section section of uh, Stolen Fires, you can see that those two pictures. Um. The alternate platform, have, as you pull onto it, has. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Leslie. Have we seen evidence of horses? No, yeah. I actually haven't. I've I've been wondering if you drop stuff on the platform or on the road, how long does it stay around? Do they like? Does it get swept off somehow once in a while? Are there little guys who come out here and clean up after us? That, that sounds like a good experiment. Yeah. Why don't we leave What's, something on the road on the what way? Do we there, have a ton of. A do we have thing. a ton of chapstick. Yeah, we'll just leave something <laughs> in the middle of the road. We'll stand up. We'll stand a little, little tube of chapstick <laughs> on the leave, road. Leave a trail of chapstick. They'll know where to find us because they'll just follow the trail. Because we of have chapstick. like five hundred chapsticks. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying, sorry. We have we have five hundred Burt's Bees lip Let's bombs. be clear. I'm not saying that's a bad idea. I think it's a hilarious idea, but I also think it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we'll leave leave something out there. It doesn't have to be a billion of them, but like a, a couple, so we can check and see if they're still there later. That's interesting. Uh, and then and on the new platform, does it look the same as the other one? You know, it looks a little different. It looks the same, but different. In this case, you have um, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have twelve portals, four large ones, one you just came out of, and eight smaller ones. Now they explain to you this one. This is what the what Sayumi called the alternate platform, leads to alternates of our Earth, and it's already been explored. Okay. And uh, there's a list for you guys. If you look at the Trello, there's a list of things, and I can provide that for folks in the audience. If you, we'll talk about that at the end of the of the game. Okay. And we want to turn either left or right to go right. to the minus one set, and I can't remember which it was. Left right. or right. Sh- uh, Lieutenant Yates told you to turn right. All right, so we're going to take a, a right turn and go through the other large portal onto the next road. Okay. Right turn. Yep. You, you go out, you make a turn, turn, make the turn. Same thing as last time. Same side, same kind of road, same kind of distance. And still no horse poop. Nope. Constipated horses. Terrified horses. Or they scooped. I mean, they maybe they were just responsible. And oh, threw their yeah, we did. They might have had poop bags. Yeah. Well, weren't they in a trailer? 
Were they? I thought they, they said were they had a truck and a trailer full of horses. Oh, well, a truck and a trailer. Yeah, yeah, but do you really think that all the horse crap stays inside the horse trailer? Because well, I've I got mean, news for you. I'm, I'm sure it doesn't, but <laughs> still, it probably wouldn't be like, you know, big old road apples laying around. I'd I'm just glad the truck doesn't die every time we go through a portal. Yeah, me too. <laughs> There'd be a bunch of dust and crap all over the place, but not like, you know, piles. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no but dust. Also, like, Anything like that on the on the platform either. No dust, things like that at all. Are, now, I didn't mention earlier, but as you pull into the ultimate platform, you notice that each of the eight smaller disks has a small pylon next to it, about uh, four and a half feet tall. And it's kind of, the top kind of tilts down at a side. And there's a triangle and triangle lights inside of the triangle. It's where the Roomba comes from. Okay. What have we been told about those pylons and what they are and how they work? Uh, you've been told that from what they understand, which is very little at this point, <laughs> <laughs> that they have something to do with uh, maybe possibly environmental controls or how the disc is turned on or off because they know that one of them on Earth, two, a couple of them on Earth are turned off and they can't enter them, but they realize they know where they are. They're under the ocean, so probably safe that they're turned off. Um, and so that's indicated by a flashing light in position number two, I believe. I'll have to look it up. But uh... so, so is the little indentation, is it like a size of one of those cubies that we made glow? Oh. I'm not. I forgot to tell you that that um, they're going to give you one of the uh, the orange crystal that they have that's extra to take with you just in case. Just in case of what? Just in case they don't know. So we can turn something on or off. Turn something or on. Find a fringe worthy. Fast knows. forward. I don't Who's know. Who's going to carry it is the question. Not it. Captain. Captain carries it. Captain okay. Take I can. I can carry it. I'll make it a little pouch to live in my backpack. All right, we'll put that on your character sheet and make certain that you manage that because you don't want to lose it. Maybe we'll find some more. So as you pull onto the second roadway and you drive for about five minutes, um, you think you hear what sounds like thunder. And it's very, very, very light. You don't know where it's coming from. There's no lightning and no clouds. And then all of a sudden, across the windshield, are you guys are you all riding in the truck now, or, or is anyone walking? No, probably, sure we've had to go, to go like yeah. If we had to go like fifty miles, we'd probably be riding in the truck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lola and the captain are in the back of the truck with the with the massive amounts of gear, and um, Sadie and Chewie are in, are in the front front cab. Then, or is it? Or Lola's in the front of the cab. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. I was in the front cab with Chewie. Okay, Let's make certain. So Chewie's driving, you hear the thunder, and all of a sudden on the front windshield, slap, and there's this blue piece of goo right across the windshield. It's like someone threw a jello mold at you. Hits it, and what flies What flavor salad down the is windshield. that? It's a, and then you guys in the back hear it. Flap, 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 as you see different colors of this gelatin mass start hitting the roadway in front of us is it all over, all over in front of you guys all over the truck it's 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 raining jello does can, can I, it's a can, lot goopier than jello it's more like uh melted jello would be it's goopy does it, like slime does does it does it smell like fruity well is chewy stopping the truck is the first question because you really can't uh, grab it till it does I'm slowing down because I don't want to slide off the road. Good idea. Okay. It's just raining this stuff now. Not heavy, but enough to like what the hell and it's just the horrible sound of slap, slap. Um I turn the windshield wipers on. <laughs> that just makes it worse. Oh. <laughs> it's so like flubber and it's just all like it's jello slime. Um, Cassie wanted to reach out and grab some. As it's hitting, you reach up the top of the truck and you put your hand out, and you hit slime. You get slimed, hit your hand, and it's just it's this weird purple goo, and there's kind of an acidic feel to it. And she's like, "Oh, it kind of tingles on my hand." Now I can't get it off my hand. Fuck! Don't it's touch it! Don't touch it! You know, astronauts. Usually would use, I don't know, in a movie you'd use a stick for that. <laughs> yeah. As her arm is now covered in purple goo. 
I'm out of practice. Um, <laughs> and the more you try and shake it up, the worse it gets. Oh, then I stop oh, shaking. I feel like ruin, I would notice that. Going to ruin the paint on our truck. Yeah, we'll close the hatch. And uh, I'll have a look at her arm and make sure it doesn't seem like it's burning her or anything like that. No, it's not burning her. Um, it's definitely got a small, oh, it's, very lightest. It's like it's like it'd be like heavy duty it's vinegar. A mimic. Not it's not a, not oh, a five percent no. vinegar solution, but maybe like a forty percent vinegar solution. Like oh, that, that's gonna stink. That's gonna tangle a lot. But nothing nothing harmful. Just weird. It doesn't seem to be moving its own accord. It's not alive, from what you can tell. Um, sh should we try putting water on it? Well, we'll clean, I'll clean it off as best I can without touching it. I'll put on some gloves. Oh, we have a lot of those. Yep, and then I'll I'll clean it off as best I can, uh, and put it in a in a bag, you know, in a in a waste bag, bio waste. <laughs> Okay, we'll get back to that because it's going to be a uh, be a minute and oh, longer than a minute to try and do this without making a mess. So Chewie slid on the truck. The front of the truck is now covered in multicolored where these these slimes. It's just all over the truck and it's just kind of rolling down it as the truck is warm. I guess you could tell what's melting. You're not quite sure. It's just goopy all over the front of the truck now. See, we should ask for flamethrowers. Um, it doesn't seem to be screwing door? with the pathway at all. So so I am slowing to a crawl because I don't want to uh unless you guys tell me that you want to go faster, I'm gonna slow down to a crawl and and treat this like snow. Uh and move super slow. Crawl. Like through. I imagine the windshield's probably it's harder to see out of it too. Yeah. <laughs> or since the windshield wipers went on, I need to know. Minimum visibility. Mm -hmm. It's a three month trip. There's no need to hurry. Ju jelly on the on the on the 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 surface of the of the road, which I don't know what the traction's like here. I'm gonna slow to a crawl. Okay. Can, no. Go ahead. Can you even see out the windshield or is it all goopy? It it sounds like it's fairly goopy. Also, you hear me yelling, don't touch it. Nobody was going to touch it except for don't you. Touch it. <laughs> so it's going to take um, Sadie about five minutes to get this stuff into the bag, but it's all over your hands. It's actually on your clothing now. It just sticks to everything. Not in a bad way. Just to, how did it get on my, it's on my, it's on my arm. How did it get on my arm? Oh, you're going to find it. It's, awful it's not crawling on you. It just seems to get all over you no matter what you try to do. So you do get, but you do get a good sample in the bag. <laughs> Well, we'll take this back to the lab for analysis. Someone else can find out if it's edible. I pull a Sharpie out of... I, we tie the bag shut. I pull a Sharpie out of my bag and I put space goo on the bag. And the date. Assuming we know the date. Uh, the October 1st. 2008. Yeah. Scientific collection space goo October 1st, 2008 platform day one <laughs> day one already so then i pull out my notebook and i go today we found some space goo it found you it looks like yeah uh, yeah so if you drive slow it shouldn't be a problem i will make you make a drive tech check, check. Uh, but if you drive faster you're probably really dangerous yeah chewy chewy does not want chewy drives down the dead center of that road he does not want to get near either edge. And anything that causes him to deviate from dead center, he immediately corrects. All right. So you make it through this. Eventually, this, this storm of gelatin stops. And you make it to the other portal. And you pull up and through it. And you're on to this negative one alternate platform. And we'll have a map for you guys for that later. Mm -hmm. That you can fill out. Because the important thing about this is taking surveys. You work in United Nations, you get to take surveys. Ha <laughs> ha. Does the, so I have forms does for y'all to fill out. Does the Google with us? Uh, it stays on the truck. In fact, if you guys pull it through, if you want to stop and get out of the truck and take a look at what it's done to your truck, you're welcome to. Yeah. Once we get to the other side, I leave the truck running. Once we get mm -hmm. to the other side, I'm assuming there's nothing else still falling from the sky. No, it, it stopped. Then I stop the truck and we get out. And. 
Unfortunately, I did not think to include a pressure washer in our equipment <laughs> request. Uh, you get out of the truck, and it, it looks like a hippie van from the 60s. It's just got colors everywhere. And you can see where it's run off, and it's not destroyed the paint. It's kind of cleaned the paint. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm into it. Could be worse. Yeah. We couldn't have brought a presser washer anyway because we, uh, we wouldn't want to waste the water. Yeah, good point. And I assume we have a big water tank on the truck. No, <laughs> you have you have portable water with you, yes. But uh, yeah, I'm assuming we have survival water and yeah, survival water. You, this this is not probably, we're not that far in the future to have a, a year in recycle, so it's not going to happen for you yeah, guys. I'm guessing we have like a barrel of potable water but probably not you're right we wouldn't have enough water to actually spray anything off um i get a little bit of windex and spray it on there. <laughs> there's got to be a there's got to be a hand squeegee that i can clean the window yeah you get this the squeegee works great yeah, you don't need to spray anything i just squeegee off the windows fuel attendance so style. um you know what we haven't tried yet well while, while we're doing this while chewy is squeegeeing the window uh, Sadie will walk over near the edge of the uh, road and I'll just take out like a penny something I've got in my pocket Okay. and I'll just throw it out into space how hard do you throw it? Uh, I give it I give it a lob I mean I've, I've pitched baseball right. <laughs> I used to play professional baseball it. I can throw you're, things you're flicking it so yeah I'm giving it, I'm giving it a, a toss I don't want to throw it so hard that I won't be able to see where it goes so okay. I'm giving it a, like a relatively light throw because I want to watch where it, what happens to it. All right. So you just chuck it, tight, lightly toss it. Yeah, give it an underhand toss. It flies to the edge of the portal and it starts to come down a little bit. And then it floats off. Yeah, there's no gravity off the side of this road. That's, they told us that, but I hadn't seen it. So I it kinda floats off to... and eventually you don't see it anymore. Yeah, and just you lose track of it. It's I mean, space. Yeah, there's, if we drive off this road, I assume we'll just float away. That's terrible. Yeah, well, we're not driving off that this road. That sounds unpleasant. Don't worry. Not going to drive off this road. Okay. So, uh, which way do we go here? We go left, we go right. Well, like I said before, now, now you're on the negative one platform. No one's ever been to before. Oh, okay. so, like so we I said know before, that you... they came to this platform, or they said they were going to come to this platform. But from here, we don't know which portal they intended to go through. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So there are eight small portals here, and two big portals, or four? Four. Okay. Hmm. You know, That'd if you be... go left from here, it's out to what they call the system platforms. That there are probably planets in that. Uh in that prime world's location, but um, they've asked you not to mess with those because they don't know if they go to space, they could actually kill you or not. Okay. That, and Mike doesn't want to deal with that crap. It's, it's an annoying part of the game for me. And the platform we're on now should go to, is this a prime platform? This is an one of the alternate platforms. So Okay, so this got, is also an alt. So this would right. go to alternate versions of the prime parallel world. world that is the prime of this set right so you have eight smaller portals and the four larger ones larger ones lead to more pathways to another other portals so you, if you turn right onto this one if you turn right again you're out to this this alternate prime but you have eight portals to explore here do you think we should go up to the alternate prime for this so we can see what like the default for this world is before we look at all of its eight alternates I think so. That's, That's probably where, yeah, where Team Three would have gone first. Sounds logical to me. I'm wondering how similar the alternate negative one prime world is like to ours. Or is it totally different? One never knows. All right. Well, it's, I guess can, we'll go. go. It's up to you guys how you want to handle this. Do you want to go and check out the prime world? Do you want to check the things that are here it's up to you i'm not going to tell you what to do yeah, it's like uh i know it know, sucks i'm sorry getting close to lunchtime i guess we could uh, eat on the way 
So I guess Chewy, Prime World first. Chewy yes? votes for the option that gets us off these platforms as quickly as possible. Well, that would be going through one of these alternates. If we want to go up to the Prime, we're going to have to drive up another 50-mile road. Maybe through the rain again. I mean, maybe, but I mean, the rain didn't do anything, didn't hurt us. Okay. I, didn't, I don't like the rain. <laughs> As y'all are fiddling around here, um, I would like the person least involved in this conversation, which would be Lola, hmm? to make me a spot check, since you're just kind of looking around. Sure. Uh... First roll of the game. First roll for roll wandering game. monsters. <laughs> Uh, let's see. And would you like me to do it in the Discord dice? It's up to, how, it's every channel? one of you. I said I trust you guys. So you can roll it yourself, or use the Discord roller. It's up to you. Not modern Discord roller, oh, but I will question. now. It's that's question, question mark roll. roll yeah. D one hundred. Yep, that's it. Seventy one, right. which is oh. higher than my spot of fifty one, which means I fail. I believe. Yes, you fail. So yeah, you, you never, never, no worries. Okay. So you're just, you guys can just take the truck and just turn right and head off to the prime prime of this alternate. Are you, are you up for that, Chewy? Yep, you're the driver. let's do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you go again. You make the you make the right hand turn. You skip the eight, eight portals there. You turn right. You go in <laughs> off uh, through the portal mm -hmm. onto the roadway. Forty seven miles. All right. Watching for. When we get to the end of this road, we'll take a break. Before we go through, because Chewie's been driving for hours. Watching for more rain. Why don't, you take, why don't you take a break on the alternate platform? We can take a break in real life. All right. So um, I'm certain we have a chance for players to take a break. So uh, we're going to take, let's say, what? It's uh, currently 8.22. So come back at 8.30. We all good with that? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. All right, Bob, you can put all us right. on.
Hey, everybody, we're back. All right. Ready for part two of tonight. Fantastic. So we last left our characters. They were they had made it to this, all, the negative one alternative platform. That sounds like a band. No, <clears throat> they said the negative one alternate platform. And they were discussing what they're going to do next while Chewie takes a break from driving the past 150 miles. So, Chewie, are you tired? Do you want somebody else to drive? Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I, I got this. I told you. I, I like driving. It's it's what I do. Well, you can like uh, driving, but you don't want to drive for, you know, no, this truck, 20 hours this, straight. This truck straight. Yeah. Nope. I like this truck. Okay. Yep. You know what? Let's, let's have some snacks. Take a breather. Stretch your legs. <laughs> you can Bust go out the far. beef stroganoff MREs. Chili Mac. I like, want, I like the want... buffalo chicken ones best myself. Mm. So I looked it up. Buffalo chicken, they didn't start making until like 2011. Boo. They didn't have yeah, one, Gotta, gotta they do your research have, about these important details. But they did have Chili Mac in 2008. Chili Mac's probably okay. Yeah, the Chili Mac hot off the presses. Quite literally. All right. Hey, MREs are, are, are a modern miracle. Amazing how that stuff works. So, do, they come the with, do we have a bunch of tiny bottles of Tabasco now yeah. from our MREs? We, yeah, and during every, our, during every our break comes driving. a little tiny bottle of Tabasco sauce. And if you're not going to use it, then you save it and you trade it later. Yeah. Right. Don't waste Tabasco sauce. I think we also have a case of Tabasco sauce on the truck. Um, I, th I think you're right. Anyway. That would not surprise me at all. Probably in the equipment list because I put it on the list. Yeah, so I, I put cayenne pepper on the list. You got to have something to put on those MREs. All, All right. right. So, which what direction are we going now? You would technically, if you went to the, the uh, prime world, you'd make a right and go through the large platform, the left, large large disc. Sorry, on the platform. And definitely, you can tell the difference. There are the four large large discs and the eight smaller discs. All right. So, Chewie, are, are you actually from Bolivia? Like, were you born there? My mom's from Bolivia. And 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 I was born in Bolivia. But she brought me to the United States when I was just a baby. And so I've never been to Bolivia. I don't know anything about Bolivia. And I don't have any friends in Bolivia. But my mom and my aunt and an uncle mm -hmm. and all my cousins, they all live in Arizona. Yeah. No, I get that. My my father was born in uh, Guatemala, but came to the United States uh, when he was a baby, when my grandfather married my grandmother in Guatemala, and then they came back here. Right. Guatemala. Never been there either. That's, I, uh, it's not, I, not as far as Bolivia. I have barely left uh, Arizona. I went to California. We went to Disneyland when I was a kid. It was pretty cool. Got to ride the Autopia. You know, maybe, maybe Europe, there's an too. alternate Disney World in one of these lands. I have a cousin, the, he lives in LA, and we stayed with him. Disneyland, so. got it, okay. I've been to Paul Bunyan land. That does not surprise me. What's Paul Bunyan land? Is that a, uh, is that a real thing? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's a real thing. I, like real life, Leslie has also been to Paul Bunyan Land. Do they have roller coasters or just, I yeah, don't know, they give you was, an axe and some trees? Uh, there was a log ride um, and a giant Paul Bunyan that talks to you. <laughs> that would, yeah. There were other things. Those are just the things I remember because I was like seven. <laughs> no, I, I feel like out here in one of these worlds, we could meet a giant Paul Bunyan that talks to us. That's the thing that could happen. And a real babe, the blue ox. Who in the winter when he eats snow? Oh wait, Babe didn't make the milkshakes. That was the purple cow. I mean, they did say there was at least one world that was like a radioactive atomic wasteland with giant monsters. Oh, yeah. That's it. I'm looking for Paul Bunyan world. I mean, I I, I read that's... all of the crazy stuff they gave us in that spiral bound book with the scary cover. Maybe Paul Bunyan wasn't a folktale. Maybe he actually came through one of the portals. Yeah, I mean, and the portals have been real. around for, I mean, uh, I guess a million years or some ridiculous thing. I mean, it's they're really old. They're in the Antarctic. So, yeah. And they're all over the planet, right? There's eight of them. 
So yeah, stuff could have come through them before. We don't know. Maybe that's aliens. Maybe yeah. that's millennials and alien. That's it. Yeah, or it's or it's elves or it's Bigfoot or stuff like that. Did it did Bigfoot come through the? Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe we'll meet Bigfoot. The whole world of Bigfoot. I need some we're, coffee. Yeah, we, we we're thinking about Bigfoot and aliens, and when we go through one of these. What we're going to end up with is like Minnesota. Is what we're going to end up with. I'd rather have Bigfoots and aliens. I can't disagree. Um, so right. you're making coffee right now. Do we have like what do we have for stove wise? I don't. Can, remember. There's a camp gas propane stove you have. Well, th doesn't the truck have like a little a little galley ish in it? Because it's kind of like an RV, isn't it? You're supposed to be able to live out of it. No, it's not really an RV. It's like a big no, cargo it, truck. It's, it's a big cargo truck. It's like oh, an okay. enormous deuce and a half. Well, it's, then it's like a box we, truck. Yeah. Yeah. When we stop for breaks, we can pull the propane stove out and we can make something if we want. But yeah, we'll have we have to stop to do it. We have to sort of camp. Yeah, we should. You never thought you'd be doing this, but you're camping in space. Yeah. Let's well, I have. Uh, yeah, there's. I... I'm sure we brought instant coffee. Do we have that in the MREs? I do not want to camp in space. I, would I don't like know why you don't want to camp in space, Chewy. That seems really, really cool. Mm, yeah. yeah, but like a white gas burner to heat up a pot of water. That's like that's that's like our 20 minute break. I want to get to some place where there's ground. I mean, sure. All right. So we don't when have, we get to have to the next, So when we get to the next platform, we have to decide which uh, thing we're going to go through. Uh, I guess we're just going to start with number one because we don't have any other. I mean, does that feel good? Well, according to the sound of music, you should start at the beginning because it's a very good place to start. Okay. Uh, Chloe, what is Lola doing? This time, everyone seems to be arguing and stretching their legs, or discussing and stretching their legs. Uh, probably trying to sketch out some of these constellations, which are apparently keep on moving and are yeah. very hard to sketch. It's not going very well. Yeah, you'll draw things, you look up, and they've moved. And it, it almost feels like they're teasing you. They don't move while you're looking at them. You look down, look back up, and they move. Hey, Lola. Hmm. Have you tried spray painting the ground of the road or the platform? I mean, we left things on the platform to see if it would still be there, but I'm curious if you can paint it. That would be cool. You could like mark it that we were here in case anybody Thank comes you. along after us if we don't come back. You know, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think she'll start to grab some of her spray paint. You know, you know just do a test stroke. Does it stick onto whatever is surface? Yeah, you is? spray paint it and you get a little curve there. What are you What are you going to do with it? All right, I what think. What kind of art she, are we making? I th well, I think she's going to do a quick tag, but then there's going to be she's going to put some arrows that are labeling, you know, which thing is which. Yeah, home. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. That is that is a great great idea. Do that. I don't know if it'll stick, but you know we can. You know, when before we go through each gate, I can I can put down some I can write on the ground where we're going. <laughs> yeah, I like it because we're having a lot of trouble finding these other guys, and I don't want anybody to have a lot of trouble finding us. Yeah. Yeah. I wish we thought of that earlier. Okay, so uh, Chloe, why don't you make me uh, an art check? I think that's a good idea to do. Okay, See, that's so. my best skill. I'm stunned. So yeah, I think it's just straight arts. You have the drawing, painting, things like that. Painting. Roll D100, yeah. 61, and I have a 76, which means I succeed. You did succeed, so you had a nice piece of work in there. Just, it, you, you, get your, you get your tag on there, and then some, some like this way, H for home, and that way, O for out. Nice. Something, something that you would understand. Yeah, probably the numbers, which Lola might understand. Ah, yeah. uh, Chloe's still trying to get her head around what these numbers and how the system works. Okay. 
All right. So when we get to this platform, have have we reached the platform without incident? You're still on the alternate platform. You haven't left yet. Okay. Well, we. Okay. <laughs> she was tagging it, and you guys were drinking coffee. Excellent. So. Let's. We'll get out of here and go down the road. All right, so you guys hop back into the truck and you head off towards the what should be the prime for negative one. All right, you yep. travel the 50 miles or so and you pull through onto the platform and looks rather clean. Yeah, well, I think looks like the one you had you saw when you were at home. No changes we'll, here. We'll also take the time here to let Lola tag the platform to pr show we were here, mm -hmm. and then we'll we have you a little diagram it. of which platform which. Portal is supposed to be number one based on the one we came in. So we marked the one we came in, and then we're going to choose portal number one, and that's the first one we're going to try. Right. So yeah, just so you understand, there are eight portals, mm -hmm. eight small portals and one large portal. So you have portals at the one and two, the four and five, the large one you came through at six, mm -hmm. portals at seven and eight, and then 10 and 11, if you look at it at clock base. Does that make sense? You just said there are eight portals plus one large one, and then you counted up to 11. No, no. Portals at one and two. Portals at four and five. Oh, I see. The positions are numbered Position. even if there's not a portal there. Correct. I'm I'm using clock base. To describe Got it. It. I, thought I, I thought that was clear. I'm sorry. Yeah. All so right, one and two, four and five, big one at six, seven okay. and eight, and ten and eleven. Right. But I'm talking about the numbers that are on the map that you gave us. The portals right. are numbered on the map. Right. You're, you, I have to pull the document up now. Yeah. <laughs> Hold so on. my suggestion would be that we go through the same corresponding portal on this one. This is not Chewie's suggestion. This is Bob's suggestion. We mm -hmm. go through the same corresponding portal as the one we came out of in on our Earth, which that would I put us in the would Antarctic. put us in Antarctica. But it also seems just like the safest one. Maybe, and but if, like we know, it does the put us Canadian. In if it does put us in Antarctica, then we at least have a good idea of where it's at. Um, and then we can hmm. kind of correspond beyond that and figure out where we're going to go next, which is probably Canada. Or yeah. I'm, I'm willing yeah. to I'm willing to start with Canada, but uh, it seems like the going going out the same way we came in seems like a good idea to me. But no, I, I think that's yeah. an idea that we would collectively come up with and it feels safe. And we know that if we go through it, we can immediately turn around and come back. Yeah. But I would, but uh, Sadie would call out. I think we should definitely have one person go through and see right. what's there before we drive the truck through. Sounds fair. I mean, maybe there's not room for the truck, right? Sounds fair. And then turn around and come back and report. Did we bring gas so, masks? Yeah, we have not We have environment suits, but we know. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. But we know that when you go through a portal, there's like a bubble of safety. Oh. On the other side, yeah. What what um, Simon pointed out to everyone guys in the basic training was that um, they know that there is when you enter a world through a portal, not the not the place out where you guys are currently. But when you enter a world through a portal, there is some kind of bubble that allows breathable atmosphere for the people walking through it, but it only goes out to about maybe five feet beyond the actual portal and the platform. Right. So you have to be really careful. But yeah, so if you end up underwater, there's a place underwater for you okay. to so it's... handle. Theoretically, right. unless it's broken, which we know they can be broken, it's pretty safe to walk through and then check it and come back. Yeah, just to reference the broken piece, there is one, the one portal on Earth uh, in Libya that uh, no one can use because people walk through it, they catch fire. Uh, so they assume that's broken and not touching how do we, it. How do we know when they're broken? You set uh, on, you, get, you catch on fire. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that makes sense. I... Yep unvolunteer for this i'm gonna wait in the truck so what we will do is does are there pylons next to these ones there are pylons next to those real quick before we get to that i did share the negative one platform sheet so you can see that in the primary chat for the group and so you can access that and edit the document i've said in the google sheet so uh, you so guys you guys have added access to that right. okay so which was the what number was earth on the prime platform or where uh, you Oh, the, the base where you came through? Mm -hmm. Hang on one second. Hatsune Station is number one. Let's make it easier. I, I put it number one. Great. 
yeah, so we should go to number one on the alternate platform. All right. Well, uh, I, I'm going to say we should take turns being the first through to check it out. And so since uh, Cassie went first on the when we came from the base, I'll go first this time. And uh, I'll check it out and then come right back. So. All right. If you're in a bun fire, I'll get an, I'll get a fire extinguisher. I'll get a fire I, extinguisher yeah. from the truck and I'll wait. Oh. Yeah, that is surprisingly a smart idea. I'm super in favor of it. Okay. Oh, you asked about the pylons. I'm sorry, right? Oh, yeah. yeah I was going to look at the pylon the to see if it looks normal, if it looks like the other ones we've seen, or if it has some kind of flashing light that looks different than anything we've seen before and indicates maybe danger. So how it works out in the triangle, you have, you know, it's triangle, little piece, little, and it's, it's multiple interlocking triangles. So take mm -hmm. one big triangle and put a bunch, put uh, nine triangles inside of that, which you can do. Um the position number one at the top is obviously depression for a crystal. And they know that the light below it shows that it's on. And every reporters you've walked through so far have that designation that they're on. Okay. Okay. The portal is on. Let's see. Right. And that's all you would know what they would be. No one actually knows. They haven't experimented them to know exactly what they do. That's true, but we do know what the ones look like on Earth uh, for each portal. And so if this one looks like one of the ones on on Earth that we know is safe, that would be a message. So is that true? They're looking at the position position number one for the uh, for this platform. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it looks like it looks it's the number two light is is on and steady. No the lights are flashing. Great. Or lit up. Okay. Uh I'll be right back. She Good said luck. dramatically, and I reach out and I touch it. Okay. You reach out and you touch it and it pulls you through. And you're on a rock you you're you're on a rocky outcropping. And you can see how uh, it's it's obviously daylight. There's forests surrounding you with pine trees. You can smell them. It's, oh smell them is so strong. You've been in forests before, so you step this it's just it feels old where you're at. This forest feels old. Um, cloudy sky, daylight, which is kind of a shock because you spent the past couple hours in twilight. Mm -hmm. um, you look back and you can see the outline where the um, platform should be, but it looks like it's worked into the stone you're standing on. So the metal kind of shows here or there. And the ramp leads down into the florist floor. Florist, fl forest floor. Forest floor. Forest floor. That's covered in pine needles, and it just smells old here, but it smells calm. You hear yeah. birds chirping. Uh, you hear squirrels. Who seem to be angry that you're here? Mm -hmm. Because squirrels are always angry when people are around. Does it look like there is sufficient room in this forest to drive the truck that we brought with us? Or is it too dense? You could drive a truck through the portal, but uh, how you turn around and get it back out would probably be a pain in the ass. We could, we would theoretically be able to back it up through the portal. Yeah, it would be a challenge going back uphill on a on a bumpy stone outcropping. But you could do it. I mean, Chewy, Chewy says he could do it. Okay. Well, I will. Chewy can do it once I have a certain. A, 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 I, I will listen for a minute. I don't hear any weird sounds. Just forest nope. sounds. Everything looks good. I'll walking, turn around walking. and I'll touch the the portal again to go back through. Before you do that, do you walk down the ramp and actually into the forest area or no? Um. I'm not going to walk further than the bubble of safety. Okay. Uh, you smell, like I said, you smell pine forest. It feels clear. The air is super clean. If you've been in city life and go out and live in the country, it's that, oh, <coughs> too, too nice here. Kind of, <laughs> kind of clear. I grew up in Los Angeles. <laughs> and so pollution is leaving your lungs. It feels weird. All right. I just Seems... want to make that make sure clear before you went back through. It seems fine. And I'll come back. Okay. All right. I'm primed with the with the, the fire extinguisher. I'm good. Not on fire. Plop. All right. And it um, makes kind of that sound. Plop. So it's a forest. It's daylight. It seems fine. Uh, but there's probably not room to drive the truck around. We might want to take the Humvee. 
through instead because there's a lot of trees and I don't think we could drive the truck and turn it around with all the, the trees in the way. All right. I'll drive the Humvee. I'll, I'll love to drive the Humvee. It's going to be a whole lot faster than this thing is. Okay. Let's, uh, let's secure the truck and then uh, get the Humvee started. All right. We're going to have to, so we're going to have to start the Humvee crank, start it. Not a problem. And then we're gonna have to wait a little bit at least half an hour, I'd say, with the engine running to make sure that the it's got enough of a charge. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because we're going to go through the gate. So, yeah, yep. just, just crank start it, drive it through the gate, and then let it sit for a little while so that the battery can charge up. Well, if we're going to sit anywhere to let the battery well, charge up, it should be yeah, here. We can just drive. But it'll but it'll die when it goes through the portal. Yeah. No, it won't, it won't die when it goes through the portal. Not but, if it's like the truck. But it'll, The battery will it, die. But the there's battery no point charging die. the battery on this side of the gate. If oh go yeah, you're side. right. You're right. So, I'm, so yeah. no, so okay. So so if we go through the yeah, let's crank it up. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Uh, but before we go through, I want to find the film camera and prep it. Yeah. Great right. idea. Um, we're not taking everything with us. So if there's anything specific, no. Well, want, uh, that's we'll, my we'll question throw to some, be. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring my 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 pack with all of my regular gear in it, and we'll bring um, I don't know, we'll bring seven days of MREs for everybody so all right four times four times seven days of mres okay right. so just reference i know what you're bringing what is everyone else bringing your standard packs i'm guessing are you bringing your weapons with you yeah yeah okay. yes weapons are some you barely know how to use <laughs> i got training in how to we've, we've trained together is it is it obvious that chewy's really bad at shooting he's not bad at shooting he's got a decent shooting Okay. He got great. trained. He was cool. bad. He was bad when he showed up. But this, you... he spent time with the peacekeepers training. We had like a couple months. Did we they have, like to, did they have to show you to hold your gun the right way? Yes. One hundred percent. But he eventually learned. <gasps> Learning's the important part. All right. Knowing is half the battle. All right. I'm taking I'm I'm taking uh, basically the as many tools as I can carry in the truck. Yeah, um, what, whatever you need to fix the Humvee. If it yeah, breaks. whatever I need to fix the Humvee. Uh, I'm not taking all the heavy tools. Right. Uh, weapons, food. Uh, Water. Helmet and vest. Lock picks. Oh yeah, that's a great a great question. Is there who's wearing armor? I think only Sadie and Chewie have armor. Everyone else has like a ballistic cloth, and that's pretty much it. Okay, well, I'm going to wear my ballistic cloth because it's probably light enough to wear and walk around. Uh, I don't need my Kevlar vest right now, uh, but but I probably I'll bring my helmet, but I'm not going to wear it right now. Okay, anything special you bring? So Chewie's bringing some mechanical equipment to make sure you can at least repair the Humvee if there's a problem. Yeah. And and I know Cassie's bringing your camera. Ola, anything special for you? Uh, let's see. Probably can be a ballistic cloth, have the shotgun in the Humvee, have like a sketchbook, have a film camera, just a few paints. Um, probably... Um. I imagine some bags because we'll probably want to take samples of things in this forest. And okay. you know, we're looking for food potentially. All right. So you pack up, you get in the Humvee, yeah. and you pull through. And you guys pull through into the, uh, just, just like I described to Brennan earlier, pull down into the forest. Yeah, you, Chewie, you probably couldn't have pulled the truck in here without having to cut down trees. All right. Humvee barely fits too, but it fits enough. I did not include a chainsaw in my requests. There is there is a chainsaw in the truck. Oh, okay, yeah. good. I, there is an electric chainsaw and there's a gas powered chainsaw. I got a sawzall, but I didn't specifically request a chainsaw. It's good to know that. Yeah, I did. It. I did. Right. I requested a chainsaw that ran on the petrol that the truck runs on, but uh, instead we got an electric chainsaw. All right. Which you can charge up in about 20, 30 minutes. <clears throat> um. Okay, yeah, so I mean, I thought we might want to make an ice sculpture, you know, and so we would need that. Uh, great. So, where's the sun? Like, what time of day do we think it is? Um, you're guessing it's probably close to noon. Oh, great. It's getting warmer, but 
it feels like it's could be probably early May based on the temperature, but you're not quite sure. You're not really sure you're at. It's cloudy skies. It's kind of a nice feel. It's not too hot, but it is getting warmer. Mike, I have a question for you. Yeah. This feels like the kind of thing we should have thought of before, but I'm going to ask you now. Do we have some reliable way to find our way back to the location of the gate? Like, do we have a transmitter we can drop here next to it or an inertial tracker in the Humvee that will keep track of which direction we went and how far? Nope. You didn't bring anything like that. Everyone remember where we parked. I'll, I'll, I'll try and find some landmarks to draw. Well, if we're driving over dirt, we're going to leave tracks. Yeah, let's and let's specifically try to leave. In fact, you know what you should do, Lola? You should tag some trees as yep. we go along. Yep. 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 So that we you can follow that. the trail back here. Multi-dimensional. I'm so glad artists. you brought yeah. spray paint. Who knew that that would be the most valuable thing that we brought on this trip? Apparently. Although, do we want? Do we actually want to go too far out right now? Maybe we should just you know, set up camp around here. Like be here for a day to see you know, what the day night cycle is like. She's um, got a good point. Like, we're expanding. actually here on a search mission, right? Like we should be able to identify. We, honestly, we should be able to identify pretty quickly. If how long how long has the other team been gone? Um, they haven't, they haven't, they haven't heard back it. Heard back in six months. Oh yeah, well, long six, time. six months is enough time to. Lose, sure. lose a no, but I, I like your idea. I think we should sort of set up a base camp here and, and walk around first. Mm -hmm. That's a that's great. Fair enough. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. And like our job isn't just to find the other team. We also need to find, you know, things Anything. to keep our planet from burning alive mm -hmm. and people from starving to death. Yeah. Plus, Maybe if we walk around really here, we berries. might find something that indicates whether they came this way. So yeah. So let let's make camp here. I right, should so you know, make a camp here at the at the portal base. Yeah, we'll make a camp here. Oh, can we see the portal here, or is it one of those invisible portals? No, it's an it's just like I said, it's a standard portal. You can it's I guess it's kind of melded with the rock apparently, but okay. you can see the ring outline. You can see the actual portal. Great. Not that anyone else can see it, but you guys. But yeah, it's sure. there. We'll I take set, a we'll picture a of. Here. Oh, I take Go a ahead. picture of the portal, which you know won't show up on film, but it's cool. <laughs> This is the place the port. You should take a, a picture of us, like here. I take a picture. Okay, everybody, yeah. stand by the Humvee and here, smile. Here we are on the alien Say planet. cheese. Or alien Earth, something. Yeah. I don't even know what to call it. Alt one. All right. I Earth see. Alt one. Prime negative one, technically. Ugh. Prime negative one. Okay, Leslie, if you're taking photographs, I want you to track all those photographs because you'd be surprised what you have, what you'll take pictures of. There's also I, I plan so so after she takes out her writing ring because those are the best notebooks and <laughs> she writes down film roll one and then like the floor the whatever prime negative one uh shot of portal group shot of Humvee she's gonna kind of keep a list of. Right. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You probably want you as a player might want to take those notes too, just for so reference later. So down we're not in alternate one. We're in prime negative one. Prime yeah. negative one. Yes. If you look yeah. at the sheet I give you guys access to, um, I don't have it open. Where to go? There it is. So. Should we have platform negative zero zero one? Mm -hmm. So. No, nope, that's a zero zero platform. What is wrong with me? Did I not? Like this. I'm prime. So actually that's incorrect. So I guess what we're gonna end up doing then is we're gonna set up camp and we're gonna basically spend the night here until tomorrow to kind of make sure that everything works the same as on our earth. Yeah, that makes sense. Make sure that night isn't, you know, there aren't snowstorms or giant Godzilla monsters that roam around. Mm -hmm. And uh, the I, I assume from the fact that you didn't mention it, Mike, that the temperature and weather is basically just kind of regular. 
like I said, yeah, it's, it's, pro it's probably May on Earth. Before you're telling, it's not rainy, it's not, uh, it's not cold. It's kind of, kind of nice out in this forest. It's nice temperatures, but it is warming up. It's the middle of the day. You, you know what? It isn't here, guys. It isn't the Antarctic. Yeah, yeah. It's also not a base. True. It's a good point. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe the Antarctic is nice and warm. Could be here. Hard to know. Hey, at night, when the stars come out, you're an astronaut. Could you tell us where we are on the Earth from looking at the stars? I can try. Should have put a star chart on my personal packing list. Uh, we can at least identify from the constellations whether we're like in the northern or southern hemisphere, that kind of thing. Yeah. If we're on Earth. Yes, astronaut, not astronomer. Astronomer. Well, yes, but there's a lot of crossover. There's space and there's spacey. But I see you guys are making camp here, base camp here. Yep. Okay, so you're building, you're putting tents out. What are you doing? We're, exactly. we're, we're creating the infrastructure with which to make coffee. Tents, camp stove. Are you building a fire? There's there's I sticks would, nearby. There's I don't nearby. Would, I think it might be better to build fires when we can to conserve fuel. Yeah, but uh, do we need a fire right now? Can I make oh, oh, you're talking about cooking over a fire. Yeah. Oh, I mean, sure. Uh, why not? Let's let's not assume everything's super dangerous. Let's just build a fire. We're, we can camp. This does seem like a normal forest. Yeah. Whoa, we'll whoa. Gather some wood. I have a hatchet. All right, you can go chop some 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 not green wood and have enough to build a nice fire in, in about thirty minutes. Okay. Um, we will, as we wander around this place, we will buddy up. So nobody goes off out that's, of sight of everybody to a, gather wood or poop or anything. That's that's you being smart. You people stick yeah, together. Watch idea. out for each other. Good idea. Yep. Buddy system. Always use a buddy. I mean, I'll turn around while Chewie's pooping. I'm not going to watch him, but I'll be right there. You know? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not that I don't have, you know, not that I got anything to hide, but, you know, still, gentlemanly. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that. Nope. Uh, so, Brendan, so you're out chopping wood, finding, finding wood to chop down. You, you hear water in the distance, running water. That's good to know. I will I will note the direction that it is for us to investigate later. You can't tell north or south, so you're assuming it's it's you're looking away from camp is to the right. <laughs> yeah, I just I note the re relative direction from the way that we are in the camp. Do you have a compass? I you do. Want to try and use it. I have. I a, do in uh, fact have a compass. That's a great a great suggestion there, Mike. I pull out my compass. Yeah, and you can tell the water is to the north. Okay. And the portal faces uh, faces west. As we've been here for a little while, and the sun has had time to move, does it appear the sun is going down to what would be west? Yeah, the sun is definitely uh, falling on west track. Oh, that's very comforting. <laughs> that at least the sun is in the same place. When I come back to camp, I will... Let everybody know there's water off that direction. At least I can hear a creek or a river or something. Okay, go so check you're, that you're out doing later. that for a while. Uh, Leslie, you're getting coffee prepared. What are Chewy and Lola doing? Um, Lola, I think, you know, takes a while to make some markings. Um, and then I think she goes and probably grabs if there are any interesting flowers or any interesting leaves probably tries and do some does some sketches of them does some uh make some pressings you know put some in a bag i think she is collecting samples yeah um just filling things you find some you find uh pine cones and they feel like pine cones would feel as far as you can tell um like i said you hear the squirrels um but you don't really see any because they're avoiding you because you're 
you're a large larger than they are, hopefully. Um, but yeah, grass seems normal. Pine, pine is normal. Bark seems normal to you. I mean, you're not a you're not a forest person, but everything mm -hmm. seems fine. Yeah, I mean, I've been camping. You have a world in the survival skill at all? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think. Did, uh, I mean, does Lola have it. that since she's no. been looking into it? Uh, okay. Did did we did we bring an encyclopedia? I don't think you did. No, we brought a, I, we brought an atlas. Not an I have an edible plant book. Um, oh. But do you like do these look like species of trees that I would have seen before? Like, do they look like white pines or like cedars? Mike's not an expert on that, so they're pine trees. Okay. They look like they look like pine trees. You would know. Okay. I'm not an expert. I won't. I won't claim to be one. I I didn't do that much research. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, <laughs> if I've been in a pine tree forest before, yeah, it definitely smells it... like a pine tree forest. The needles feel like they should. Um, the pine cones, um, they've not opened up. They're still kind of solid. Um. Also, I'm gonna tell Chewy make sure that you don't park the Humvee. Um, underneath pine cones. Really? Why? Because. Thud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You end up without windshields. Oh. oh. You see one hit the ground. It's not pleasant. <laughs> oh, that was oh. It dented the ground. Well, I mean, aren't these Humvees designed to take bullets to the windshield? Yeah, they're designed for bullets, not pine cones. Have you ever seen a sugar pine cone? No. Imagine something that's just 10 pounds um, falling 50 or 60 feet. Oh, wow. That's heavy. Chewy, uh, <laughs> neither me or Chewie is an outdoors person. Chewie is kind of lost, and he's just wandering around the camp kind of looking for something to do until he gets a bright idea, and he goes into the Humvee, and he turns on the radio, and he scans through the channels in the radio to see if maybe there's some music. Holy shit. All right. I didn't think you guys would do that, but sure. Let's see where you're at. It's really staticky. All right. But you think you hear music through one of the statics, but it's your it, whatever it is is not in range. It, mm. it's, it's that whole. All right, all right. You're yeah, fiddling we... with the FM band. You don't really get anything. You switch down to AM because why not? And yeah. eventually you come across it. You hear, you think you hear music, but it's nothing else is coming through. You find the one spot where you hear music. All right. We and did, in it's... fact, bring like a. We talked about bringing a. Uh... Uh, an, an, an antenna to listen for yeah, yeah, radio, I believe, right? I believe we have a big, a big proper radio with an antenna. It's in the truck. It's in the well, truck. we can we truck. can go back and get the antenna yeah. at least and hook it up. All right, so Chewie's off to do that, I guess. Then, right? Yes, but right. buddy system. Somebody should go with me. I'll go with you. Okay. You're going to need help carrying it anyway. Get the heavy, get the heavy. Look, I am not a, I am not a child. I can. No, I just, stuff. I just mean it's big. That's all I meant. Okay. So we get, oh, so okay. So what we're gonna get is we're gonna get the the big proper radio, which I'm, I, I I'm sure we asked for a big military you did. style radio, multi. I'm assuming yeah, that I'm assuming the Humvee has like a small radio. Has a small radio, but you have the you have the massive yeah, one. We have like a ham radio. radio. Get the big radio. Yeah. Get some uh some uh uh. Pipes. I specifically got metal pipes that we can prop up a uh, antenna on. We'll set up a big antenna on on like a pylon, or oh, we could put it on a tree. You can climb, climb a tree and set the set the um, the antenna in a tree and get us some some height. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's what we'll do. Good idea. All right. Okay. You're gonna spend about 20 minutes getting the antenna and the radio out there, and you're gonna set that up. It's gonna take you a better part of an hour. We're also gonna have to we'll charge. Right I guess tree. I assume that we can hook the the um hook the radio up to the Humvee, which has the alternator running to power it. Yep. Okay. And not have to wait for batteries to recharge or something. Okay. Hang on one sec. Let's check something. As again, I've got ten thousand pages open, so I apologize. Must have closed that. All right, so we're gonna need some some skill rolls here. Let me just get the uh, skill chart open. I think I closed it like an idiot. Yep, I think I did. 
just a reference for folks, um, we are using the basic system from Chaosium, which uh, if you know Call of Cthulhu, you know how that works. Um, it's very simple and easy to use, sort of, but it can be as complex as you want it to be. So let me just open Bob's sheet here. All right, so let's see. Uh, Bob, I just wanted to make a, a mechanical repair roll. All right. To set that up and then an electrical one to get it going properly. All since right. you've really never done that before. Well, mechanical repair. Uh, I got a 67 out of 81. Okay, you're Ooh. good there, succeed. Uh, an electrical repair. Oh, I got an 86 out of 51. Now, that's that's a failure. Or you can spend fate points, your power points, to actually move that to a success if you want to. I can describe how that... Did I, didn't I describe how that system worked? I, I would I need a reminder. When do our that's power points fine. come back is the big question. We usually refresh after sleeping. You, you can either rest or, or oh. while you're awake or sleep and get them back. They tend to return faster when you're sleeping. All right. But let me get that it's in the character creation no it is not i'm a monkey too many things so much time just a walk through there it is okay now into fate point okay so just a refresher course on fate points All right, so your power points are also your fate points. Now, power is your power score uh, and influence the game on your behalf. One, you can spend five power points to re roll any percentile roll desired, but you must take the second roll and you can't buy a, a buy roll after that. You can spend five power points to ignore a skill and trust fate using a, diff uh, using a difficult luck roll instead. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you're desperate. Mm. You can spend three power points to ignore one point of damage from a single attack. That can be very useful because damage hurts in this game a lot. Yes. Uh, you can spend six power points to shift the result of a roll toward a more beneficial result, such as bring a fumble into a failure or a failure to a success, normal success to a special, or a special to a critical. This can only be used on your character's rolls and not apply to the dice that have been re-rolled. So I can spend five to re-roll or I can just spend six to shift it to a success. Well, I'll just spend six to shift it to a success. Okay, so reduce your power points by six, and you may, may that you succeed with that. So, um, just to describe what happens. You get the antenna set up. That was not too difficult. Um, but you've never really worked with a radio before like this. It's actually much bigger than you're used to working with in a car. Mm -hmm. And so you're fiddling with it. It blows sparks after 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 fiddling with it for a bit, but you're able to actually get it back on track and um, hook to the battery properly so it runs. All right. So after about 15 minutes of fiddling with that, you've got it done. All right. And you turn it on, and you scan the FM band, you get nothing. All right. What about in the AM band? So you turn, you set it right to the dial where you had it before with the, with the MV radio, and you're definitely getting music. And um, see, anyone here have training in music at all? Mm -mm. Nope. Any kind of history knowledge? I, I have, have art history. I have world history. Art history, world history. In fact, I'll tell you what. Those are going to stick. Why don't everyone make me a knowledge roll? Oh, yeah. This is... Nope. 62. This is where EDU pays off. Chewy went, to, Chewy went to public school, and he didn't do very well in public school. <laughs> he does not have a very good education score. I yeah, got a Sadie 50. Went, Sadie went to high school, and then she went to college, but she went to college on an athletic scholarship, and she was a jock. Did anyone so, succeed at the knowledge roll? I did. I got a 45. I got 50. Oh, is that, is that a success for you? Uh, under is a success, right? Under is a success, yes. Yeah. My knowledge is 60. Chloe? Uh, no, I got an 80. All right. So um, Sadie and uh, Cassie recognize 
That is definitely swing music. And that's definitely a big band playing it. That's like that uh, World War II music. That's like what they play at the at the Moose Lodge when they have steak dinners. Moose Lodge? M- a what lodge? We had very different childhoods. You, you know, Moose Lodge, where all the, you know, you know, a Moose Lodge, like the Brotherhood yeah. of the Moose. And Pretty the- good to hunt moose. Look, I keep I keep scrolling through or the, the supper club. I keep scrolling through the channels looking for a proper Spanish station. Spanish station. Okay, see so because they channels. always broadcast a whole lot stronger than. than well, then you come across someone speaking. Oh, here we go. Uh, now, what language does everyone speak here? Just out of curiosity, English and Spanish. Same. English, Spanish, single Spanish. I German, speak, I, English and German. English and German. I speak English. Uh, I speak German and Spanish both fluently. In addition to English. I speak French. Uh, I speak French and English and Spanish fluently. Sorry, I speak German well. I speak Italian and Russian passably. Basic. Okay, then those of you who speak German hear German, and the news. It's obviously newscaster saying you get something quickly about. I'm not going to make your rolls on this. You just, you just, you know, you'll, you'll pick up the words really quick. Um, the Chancellery signed a new peace treaty today with uh, the king of France. And while you're up your head around that, you kind of miss the other other words. The king of France? When's the last time France had a king? You have Before history. The whole you choppy, roll that choppy thing? Yeah. Yeah. A king was 1779. Huh? Chew- There's no way Chewy knows that. I mean, I feel like yeah. art history probably no pic when they stopped drawing pictures. <laughs> I got a five out of thirty-four. That's critical success. You know exactly when it was a lot. It was it, the French Revolution happened in the late late seventeen, early eighteen hundreds. So they haven't had a king since then, for, uh, on our earth, as far as you know. They didn't have so, radios back then. So either the French Revolution didn't happen here, and they did eat cake, or. I don't know. Or they invented radio and or they invented radio <laughs> in the 18th century. Yes. And also, swing music. Also, at some point, I am taking a picture of the radio setup. <laughs> okay. Our first radio setup. You got to be able to. You, I got to show the big wigs how we did anything. Otherwise, they won't give us any more money. That's how it works. True. You can tell she worked for Nash. Yeah, she worked for Nash. She knows all about getting <laughs> getting her uh, funding. Um, I'm leaning towards this place didn't have a French Revolution. I don't know what that means for the rest of the world. I'm sure Marie Antoinette's a lot happier now, though. People probably eat a lot more baguettes. Yeah. So I don't know a lot about radios. I, I admittedly, I know more than Chewy does, uh, but AM radio can travel pretty far yeah. under the right yeah. conditions. We could be anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere, potentially. Well, once it gets to be night, we'll have a better idea. I mean, well, can we uh, see the stars from here, Mike? Or is it going to be too hard to see the stars from these trees? It depends if the clouds go away or not. Oh, uh, stupid clouds. Um, if you can just scan the dial more, you get more German voices mm-hmm. and wide varieties of music, uh, like you heard before, the swing music. There's even some oompa music you come across eventually. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're in That's Germany. what they play at the State Fair, and all the old ladies do the polka. What are you talking about? You've never been to Minnesota. No. no. I've been Why to would Germany I go to Minnesota? Know what you're talking yeah. about. They're not. Things are mysterious. So you can on. go to Paul Bunyan land, obviously. She has a good point. Sadie says, the problem with this entire situation is that my mother is German, and she's never going to let me live it down that my German is that good. You should learn German. Sadie, it'll be good for you. 
No, mom, I don't want to learn German. Here we are. And, then, and I'm, I'm okay with German, but like, I just wanted to learn French more. So. Uh, I take it, I really only know German because that's what the old people talked. Well, um, my mother is an old people, so that makes yeah. sense. That checks out. <laughs> um okay uh so we're gonna spend the night here still and we can continue to listen to the radio and see if we can pick up any more random information from news broadcasts or disc jockeys talking about things that are going on uh what would be great is if we can catch anything that mentions where the radio station is like broadcasting from what city or anything like that uh, so when we have all all evening and you know through the night to listen to it, so we'll see what we can pick up. All right, um, you continue to listen to it. Uh, eventually, the station listed with the news on it uh, breaks to mention the city of Essen. Oh, so... in, in the GDR, the German Democratic Republic. Okay, well, that's great. So, yeah, the. Yeah, the we GDR can... is uh, would be the uh, would would be good Germany, sort of. <laughs> I mean, we're you know, yeah. I guess we're uh, we're basically we're basically trying to figure out. I guess are we looking at East West Germany situation or unified Germany situation? I have to go further than a forest to find that out. Well, no, I, I mean, from the name that they called the country, like uh, East Germany called itself the DDR. And West Germany wa uh, had a different title. I mean, it's been a while since. The GDR, the German, German Democratic Republic. Thank you. So, uh, so which did which did they identify themselves they as? They referred, if the, actually, with the Great German Democratic Republic is what they say. Okay. And they say it, the people in the news say it rather proudly. All right. Well, that's hopeful i mean they didn't say heil hitler good yeah <laughs> nope none of that so all right so how uh, far away are with can radio stations be am stations can be pretty far yeah i mean depending on the train it could be 100 miles or more the train and the atmospheric conditions under certain yeah. conditions they can be a thousand miles on AM radio. Although I don't think we would get this many channels on that far away. Yeah, well, if you if you if you have an atlas, like I think you do, you can look up where Essen is. Yeah, I mean, we I I didn't bother looking it up because my we character would is familiar with Germany and would know kind of where it is. But uh, but yeah, we could look at it on the map and see generally where it is. Essen, if you fiddle, when you're fiddling with the atlas, Essen is in the northwestern corner of Germany. Um, you're close to the Netherlands and Belgium. It's about three hours from Amsterdam, if I remember correctly. Three hour drive. Yeah, about that, yeah. So, what we've determined is this is a modern technological place to be. So they have radios and everything that were that they speak German. So they are a lot like our our world uh they have france and they have germany so they're that similar uh they're different they have a king of france so that's weird but like i mean it's there's a lot to hold on to i guess is what i'm saying it's not totally weird world but we don't um, get any we only get german uh, hey, you're you're well. You're 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 only the major stations you're picking up are German. If you listen to the smaller end ones, you're finding stuff in French, um, and Dutch. But um, no one speaks Dutch in this group. And if you're German, you speak German and French. It's like it's like listening to parents arguing in different languages. It really is. <laughs> was that was what language was that? It's you know it's Dutch. It just sounds like German and French mixed together, like that, at times. Right. Being in Belgium is fun. Um, you do pick up English stations from London. Oh, okay, okay. We do get some English. That 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 was that, that was actually one of the one of the larger musical transmissions you, stations you get. 
it tends to be broadcasting at a really high power for AM, but you get music everywhere. And uh, do we hear anything that indicates there's any kind of trouble or danger? Like um, that anybody's at war with anybody or anything like that? They don't go into detail, a lot of things, but uh, one of the newscasters in Germany was talking about the dangers of the SSA and the USE is just going through its its, its current uh, first steps and uh, they're concerned that it'll be a problem down the road between the two, organiza two organizations. But what SSA is and it, you, uh, USE is, you have no idea. They don't explain those over the radio. SSA in UAE. Soviet and... Um, USE, and, sorry, USE. Uh, and, okay, again, Chewie doesn't know this. SSE is probably... SSA. SSA. I'm going to guess are the Soviets. And the USE is probably the Americans or their, their, uh, their, their, their analog for those things. I'm guessing that the USE is United States Empire. And that they're imperialists. Okay. I mean, but again, you yeah. act like the USA is an imperialist. But... Those are my those are my <laughs> my thoughts, and not Chewy's thoughts. Um. All right. So, um, we don't see any indication that our other team came this way, but we still want to kind of look around. I guess here's a question for the group. Um. Do we want to do like a really light reconnaissance of each portal? Like we've learned a lot about this place just from coming through and listening for a little while. Yeah. Do we want to do that with each of the portals before we go any further from each one? That's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. Then yeah. we can have like a basic map of you know what each portal is. Because I mean, we're assuming we're assuming that this is Europe. That this portal well, we, is somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Well, we we're almost if we believe that Essen is the same place, yeah. and it feels like it is because of the languages that we're hearing on the radio, then I think that's a pretty good bet that we're somewhere within radio range of Essen. Yeah. And so that's that's great to know. And now theoretically, though, um each of these, each of the portals on that platform, this is the prime platform for negative one. So each of the portals that we're going to go through is going to come to this world. Yeah, yeah, that's just a different right. place in it. That's why mapping each of the things will give us. We could get a location for each of the portals. Yeah, for each portal. Way. Then we can decide because we know there's we not a portal near Essen in our Earth. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, great, good idea, Chewy. Okay, yeah, let's let's try to figure out where each of the eight portals is. And that would that would be valuable information, and in, uh, and we should in fact write all that down and leave it in the truck in case something happens to us. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So we'll spend the night, like I said, you know, camp out, listen to the radio through the evening, and in the morning, uh, we'll listen a little more while we pack up, and then we're going to go back through the gate. And okay. Go to so do we do another? camp set up listen around then maybe make our way back keep going until we get to all eight okay so let's do I like it. the way you say that like it just happened <laughs> there's no but, problem with any of that there's yeah no i'm sure they're all nice for us and we're not gonna <laughs> nothing is complicated I take, the, I take the same three pictures at every place yeah. uh, <laughs> Lord, have you not learned anything about me in the past how many years do you know me <laughs> yeah it's well, I mean, kind of like that i mean i, I don't I, lola doesn't know that can you, with just a regular old camera, take a picture of the sky and then we would be able to see the if the sky's clear and then get the stars and then be able to use that to get a more precise location for each of these places? I don't know enough about cameras to tell you an answer. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough. Or rather, about, I don't know enough about film cameras. Yeah, to I don't tell know enough answer. about manual no battery cameras with, yeah. with with manual film cameras. Taking a picture of the stars is not easy. Yeah, because yeah, it have to be a prolonged exposure. Yeah, yeah, you could do it, but you'd need a tripod. 
Uh, and again, you'd be just guessing at the exposure. Time. Which uh, Lola I, I feel really photo- dumb for not requesting a tripod now, too. Yeah. Um, Lola has photography. I feel like she could probably whip something up. Maybe so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's an expert. You can. You want to try it, you can. Okay, so shot four is the sky. Well, Lola has to try. So let's give let's give a little shot at that. Well, I mean, the exposure's wasted. We're also, regardless, we're also not going to know until we get back and 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 develop, develop all film. this film because we definitely don't have the facilities of, to develop color photos on the truck. Right. Um, Note to self: bring a dark room. <laughs> all right. So yeah, um, I, I I can show you how how to set up that exposure. Well, so great. We'll so Clay, you want to make a roll for that? Yeah, I got a twenty six. Oh, nice. That's definitely that should be a special success, I believe. Which your skill is like eighty, isn't it? Uh it's fifty one for for photography. Oh, okay, so it's not a special success. Okay. Just normal. That's still a success. Yeah, you can definitely get a shot of that at night. Um you set the exposure right and you take you definitely know you you set it properly. And you using the home V as a as a quote unquote tripod <laughs> to make it work. And you get you get one shot of the stars at night when it's partially clear. Yeah, I mean, maybe they'll be able to figure something out from it. It's better than nothing. Maybe it can at least confirm since they already they know what we're going to tell them about where we think we are. It should narrow down what they think they're looking for. We also note exactly the time that we took the picture. That'll be important. Oh well, by, do we watch? have a UTC time? We don't have I, we I synchronized have a, times? Well, we have we have mechanical watches. We requested mechanical watches, so we have, right. Yeah. But how are so they we, set? They but did we be, synchronize them? They yeah, should be set, set to our home time. They should be set to UTC on Earth. Yeah, they're they're set and, for us from our yeah. time of departure. And we uh, should but reference, it, but the local time is what matters to the stars. We have no idea what local time. Is. Yeah, we don't know we what the can, local time is. Eventually, oh, wait, broadcast does the radio tell can, us the local time? Yes. Oh, eventually, great. listen to this broadcast long enough, you can get the time. We'll set so, one watch to that time. One German watch. Got it. German time watch. Mark it down. Negative one <laughs> platform. Negative zero zero one. Prime Earth. German time watch. Portal one. Do we stick? We stick a piece of duct tape on there. We write that on the back. There you go. <laughs> but um, it's a manual watch. So that means everybody, somebody, even though we're not wearing it, is going to have to wind it every day. Well, yep. they're self winding. The watches are self winding. Well, then somebody has, the somebody has to yeah, wear it. Somebody has to wear it. Somebody just has to put yeah. put it on or put it in their pocket. <sighs> Just jiggle it around a little bit; it'll wind up. At the end, of the I think Brock actually get the time you, that you know they mentioned the day is uh, May twelfth, and then you hear nineteen forty nine. Well, that makes the swing music make sense. Okay. Okay. So. So we're, putting, we're where so am I putting this in my notes? We're like five years late of going to kill Hitler. Damn it. Well, I mean, we we hope Hitler's already dead. Well, we were hoping to get here early enough that we... If I have a single goal in a time dimension hopping game, it is to get to kill Hitler. We also Mm. don't know that Hitler even came to power here. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Or that, you know, he was even born. It still counts. It still counts if I kill artist Hitler. Nobody will understand why you're doing it, why you hate that guy so much. Yeah. But sure. <laughs> yep. Doesn't matter. You just tell everybody who sees you do it, trust me. Trust me. I did you a favor. We'll put uh, it on the to-do list. Uh, yep. To-do. Kill Hitler. Right. Um, great. So, yeah, then uh, we have a lot of information about this place. This is terrific. And nobody got hurt. That's even better. Yeah, this job's easy. <laughs> I was a little worried about the squirrels at first. That maybe we were on like deadly intelligent squirrel world. I like, don't know. Uh, give me a little credit. Like, hu- like Hunger Games, uh, crazy squirrels. Hunger or Games squirrel world. He just kept mentioning squirrels, and I'm like, why does Mike keep talking about the squirrels? Squirrels and squirrels and squirrels and squirrels and squirrels and squirrels and squirrels. And squirrels, and squirrels. Okay, so do we have any trouble breaking camp, packing up, and getting through the gate again? 
not unless you want trouble, but uh, no, no, no problem packing all that back up the next morning. All right. So we head back through and uh, you back the you back the uh, car up through the gate. Yep. Uh, then we'll note on the platform uh, with are uh, the marks that Lola made still on the platform. Oh yeah, they're still there. Okay. Wait. We will add to them and modify them to indicate that we returned from that place and have gone through the next one. I'm keeping a record on, yeah. on the actual platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. and it shows we went in platform, and came out. You mark and one next to it and right this, done. This is not a leave no trace uh, exercise, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask about the about the forest world before you left. Are you taking everything with you? Or are you leaving kind of camp notification? Are you packing out clean? I think we should pack out clean. We don't want anybody yeah. coming along and discovering anything and setting up some kind of like watch on that place. That makes sense. They might think they got invaded by aliens and they have weirdos who are hunting down aliens hanging out there. There's always alien hunters everywhere you go. <coughs> okay, so you back out, you're on the you're on the you're on the uh Negative one prime platform. What are you doing next? Uh, Just so you know, we got about go uh, we got about twenty or twenty or so minutes until we're done here. Okay. So. Do we want to go through another gate right now, or do we want to spend our last twenty minutes sort of debriefing on what we think we learned and what we want to do next? Um, I can go either way. I don't know. I don't know that we have that much to debrief on, but uh, I, I think we at least take a look inside gate number two. Yeah. Okay. Well, whose turn is it to go first? Not it. All right, I'll it's I'll go first. go first. I'll get the fire extinguisher. <laughs> How far away is it from gate one to gate two? It's like it's one clock slot over. So yeah. Oh, would, and we look at the pylon to make sure it looks normal. Again, same thing as before. Same same color light. My job is to man the fire extinguisher. Well, your guys' job is to go through. Not sure that's entirely accurate, Chewy, but we'll see. I am I am hundred percent sure that's accurate. I, I have the air con I have the, the fire extinguisher. You Who do. I mean that does support your assertions. Yes. <laughs> All right. Lola He's is going supporting to... evidence. Lola's gonna put her helmet on and then walk in. Okay. So you put put your helmet on. <laughs> this feels weird. And you touch the portal and you go through. And as you step through you almost hit a brick wall right in front of you. And it smell. First thing it hits you, right? Uh, it smells dirty. It smells like trash. You're facing a kind of a stained brick wall. You look behind you, and there's no there's no portal. There's no platform. There's nothing. But you can see kind of a hazy rainbow outline that you walk through. Can I walk back? I try and touch behind me where the haze is. You go right through, right back onto the platform. Hmm. So she goes through and comes right back out. Fire extinguisher. I'm she not fire? on fire, but All right. I think I think we're like right in the middle of a city. I think it drops us off into an alleyway, maybe? I just wanted to make sure I could get back first. Hmm. So you're well, saying no room for the truck. It's not toxic or anything. So which 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 gate is this? Number, Number two. two. Okay, so this is negative two prime. Negative one prime. Negative gate one prime. Two. Gate two. This is gate gate one. Sorry, I'm trying to be a note taker, and I'm not a note taker. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. You want to go back through and look around a little? Yeah, more? yeah, yeah. I'm going back. I just wanted to <laughs> fill you in that we're not bringing the Humvee. This time, okay. it's whatever we can carry. Uh, I think. All right, that's that's going to cause some problems. Yeah, I think she aware. actually takes her helmet off because she wants to not stand out as much. In case she runs into other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's going to go back in. And then. So she goes in, there's a brick wall. Is there any room to move anywhere? You go through and um, again smell of trash. Um, it's like walking into a, a dumpster mm -hmm. location. All the dumpsters just smell mostly rot. Mostly smells like rotten food, urine, all kinds of all kinds of horrible stuff. Um, you hear rats, 
Um, it's definitely, it's still, it's definitely, what's it? Are you going to sewer? It's evening. And so um, it would smell like, also like, smell like this, you'd smell salt water as well. You know that from being from New York City. You know what that, mm -hmm. uh, the river and ocean smell like when they hit each other. Yeah. What, what time did we leave Europe? Morning. So Wait. we're on the other side of the world. If it's if it's no, evening, it'd be nighttime. I'm sorry, my bad. It'd be nighttime based on the time structure. If it's nighttime. evening, where this and again, this is this is Bob talking, not Chewy. Uh, if it, if it's evening now, where we just went through, then that means that it's the opposite side of the planet from Europe, which means mm -hmm. North or South America, I think, or possibly. Didn't write the time difference. Let me just calculate it real quick. I mean, assuming that all the land is in the same true, place. True. Yeah. If I listen, do I hear the sounds of people talking in, in the distance anywhere? Yeah, it's. I'm sorry, it is nighttime. Um, you can hear people talking in the distance. Uh, you actually hear um, the sound of some kind of uh, some kind of bellowing ho uh, horn from maybe a boat. Um, as you, you smell the mixture of seawater and um, river water, and you can see there are gas lights. And they definitely are gas lights. They are not electric lights. Mm -hmm. Out on down on the street area, it's kind of dark in the alley where you're at. You also hear rats in this alley, which is not nice. I'm from New York. I can handle rats. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I'll, I guess I'll walk out of this alleyway, take a look around the street. Uh, the buildings here are made of brick. They're kind of rounded. They definitely have a feel of time long before what you're used to. Um, you notice that above the alleyway is a street sign that says Sedgwick Lane. It's written in English. In front of the alley is Sedgwick Lane. We'll be able to find our way back. And underneath it says Cedric Lane, it says Wilson City. Wilson's. Right. Are there any. Is this all like houses? Are there any stores? It is uh, definitely a metro, semi metro area. It looks like you're down near the docks. Uh, these are all, there's no houses here. It's all shop fronts, and a lot of them look like they're closed for the day. You can see across from you, there's a butcher's. Um, if you come further out in the street, you can see there's a dressmaker shop with fancy dresses. All vary at the same time period, about the 1940s, 1950s feel. Um, you think you hear music in the distance? Um, there's no one out on the street. It's obviously, it's way past um, sunset. Yeah, I uh, think I'll walk back at that point. I tell you what, also make me a knowledge roll just for shits and giggles. Um I'll try. Come on, high school education. I'll I'll spend a power or six okay. power to boost six it. Power. To All right. so you, so you, um you know for a fact there is no city that would be this possibly large called Wilson City that's a port in um that you know of that it, it, it's in an English area, speaking area, which which would be the United States or the UK, as far as you know. The UK wouldn't just think Wilson City. That's just not not them. Could be Australia. Could be Australia. Could be the US. Australia would jive with the time zone. Potentially, Mike mm -hmm. is also bad with time zones, but I believe I'm correct. It should be night here when it was morning there. If I subtract. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm right. I'm right. You need to get a globe and just put it next to your chair. Yeah, so I'll just, go. Yeah, I'll go I just back. Ask oh, and be like, "All right, can you pull out that atlas?" Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's check it out. All right, so it's nighttime over there. It says it's someplace called Wilson City. Seems like it's a dock. Oh, sorry, be later than that. Actually, be closer to. Yeah, closer. It, you you guess it's really late. Actually, there's definitely no one on the streets at this time. Okay. Yeah, it was really we'll, late. Yeah, we'll just scan the coast for a city of any size named Wilson City. 
Um, you can spend about 20, 30 minutes doing that. You guys don't find anything like that at all. All right. I mean, it could have a different name. There's a king but, of France. Chloe, you yeah. do know that uh, um, it definitely smelled like like it did in New York City with the um, with the mixture of seawater and river water. It's definitely always a smell when you find that. Could did be. it look American to you? Or did it they, look they sort had, of, you know, british lights. I guess it's I, it's weird because they have gas lights you know, and everything should have electricity at this point. I don't know. History seems different. Hmm. Definitely still seems like for like 1940s, 50s. There is a there's a dress shop that we should visit later in the day so we can find get some clothing to blend in. I guess we don't have money. We don't we, we don't have money. <laughs> Yeah, I I actually well, I thought about asking for gold to bring, but they wouldn't give me other things that seemed less. So I didn't think they'd give us a bunch of gold coins. Well, even if we had money, it might not be the right money. Yeah, they'd be yeah, like, "Who's gold. this weirdo dude on your dollar?" Yeah, but even mm -hmm. gold coins are kind of yeah, suspicious. You bring like... Gold, gold little bars or something, small ones, like one ounce each, and then you can sell them. Uh, yeah, Mr. Police Office, this guy trying to give me gold. Yeah, like it, um, that's like <laughs> trying to buy shit with thousand dollar bills, you know. Like, well, you go to a jewelry shop and yeah. you'd you sell it, right? Every city's got a pawn shop, right? Yeah, yeah. What was we're not we're not we're not worried about getting top dollar for what it. What would probably be better is to get some some jewelry made out of gold. So, like, oh, that's a great idea. Rings, yeah, you're right. Gold necklaces; those are the types mm -hmm. of things we can just sell. That does seem less suspicious. Yes. I'm, yeah, that seems like... I'm, I'm glad you have experience with that sort of thing. Look, I may have Louis. pawned a few things here and there. <laughs> I mean, we've got these watches. Sometimes, sometimes when they bring the have? cars in, there's 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 stuff in the glove compartment. And uh, I don't know who the owner is anymore. And so, you know, I just... Uh, I, I, I Taking the pawn shop. You made a lot of those extra iPhones you found. Yes, perhaps. So, so on that note, how many watches do we have? I, we have, we had at least one for each of us. I have, I had my own, and they gave us four. So we have several, we have several watches, but I'm not sure we want to sell one of them because they, I mean, they're anomalous. They're, they're super useful. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we should keep our watches. I don't think we need any money right now. I mean, I have regular looking clothes. I mean, they'll look they'll look not correct for this period, but they won't look like weird space clothes. I have I have blue jeans and t-shirts and a leather jacket, which is probably what so, people wear here <laughs> now. So, so 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 we are here and we are looking for 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 two things. Technology to help us and Team number three. Mm -hmm. I think we can determine pretty quickly that they don't have any 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 uh, technology that helped us because because uh, they're behind we us. Have, we would have invented it in 1949, right? So uh, yeah. what we should do is we should uh, check this place out. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, check their uh, the the, the, the uh, magazines or um or, or papers, right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So if there's any newspapers in that alley, see if we can find any information about people from somewhere else. And if not, uh, get the hell out because we're not finding anything useful here. No, I, I agree. There's a you bunch of trash in that sense. alley. There's probably newspapers. Okay, I volunteered for going first, not for digging through the trash. <laughs> Well, if we wait until daytime, uh, I bet that there's a newsstand. Yeah, but we got to have money to buy something. Uh, I think I can take care of that. Let's say... We, you don't need to we, worry about it. If there's some newspapers, I can get them. Okay. We also don't okay. necessarily need to take possession of the paper. We can flip through the paper and set it back down. Yes. That's what I was implying I was going to do. I mean... What do you think me take me for? Some sort of uh, criminal? You did come in in an orange jumpsuit to our big interview. Those are all Not of wrong. the uh, all of the, uh, the the rage in Tempe, Arizona, right now. Um, since you brought it up, um, I'd like Cassidy to make me an idea roll. Idea? 
That's off your intelligence score. Okay. Okay, I'm I not seeing... nine. I rolled a nine, so I think so... I make it if I can find where that is on my sheet. I'm sorry. Aha, I found it. Sixty-five. Yeah. Yeah, so that's definitely a special success. Um, one, if you wait till dawn and go out to get a paper, uh, even just find a paper and look through it, um, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. Your clothing would probably likely not match and it will draw attention because you're wearing uh, camouflage uniforms. Oh, camouflage. I just thought they were all of drab. They still look like military uniforms. In, they do. In some way. But I have regular um, clothes too. And two, I mean, I have my PT clothes. You have you can change out of the clothes you have and other clothes you have. Yes, I'm not saying again, but you say. But the point is, if you all go out like that, it could be problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, there are newspapers in that alleyway. Probably the safest way to get that information right now. Yep that that seems easy. Uh, so I'll let Cassidy div divulge that to you guys if she wants. Yeah, to. um, it's pro. We're we're gonna stick out like sore thumbs regardless of what we do. But, like, look at all this trash. It's full of newspapers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, Time well, magazines. Like yeah, there's got to be enough stuff in Chip here to don't at least eat give us the something. Legos. Question is, who's going through to get it? I'll go. All right. And I'll, uh, uh, I'll change clothes before I go. Okay, what are you wearing? I'm wearing uh, jeans and boots and a... Uh, a black t-shirt and uh i guess i probably don't need my leather jacket uh was it cold i i mean i'll tell you it, it was a little chilly I, I don't think you need to change it's so late no one's out on the streets you well it's actually so? may so it wouldn't be chilly it's got a breeze but it's definitely humid okay well that's fine i'll just uh i'll just go and i'm not going very far from the gate so if there's any trouble i'll just hop back through right yeah, it's easy. Okay. And it's an alley, so again, not it's hard to spot you from the main street. And I guess in camouflage it'll be even harder. <laughs> so yeah, I'll step through. All right, step and through. then I'll look around to the alley and just find some newspapers or discarded magazines. Definitely a trash cans right near where you're at. You can lift those up and go through them for a bit. Take a lid off. So they find a newspaper and kind of get it unraveled for the mess it was rolled up in. And you get to the front page, and it says, as a headline, the Socialist States of America announce a new prosperity oh. for all. You're looking at that like, oh. what the? And just then you hear, you feel a light hit you. Hey, what are you doing there? Put that down and come here. I think that's the place where we're going to end it for tonight. Sure. Oh. Love it. I forgot to mention I love cliffhangers. So you guys gave me the perfect out to get a one. So there you go, and that'll that'll do it for tonight. So in a few minutes early, but uh, uh, that was a lot of fun for first session. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for coming and playing tonight. I really appreciate it, and I thank all our friends, uh, new friends who came to visit today for their first timers to our channel, which is fantastic to hear and see. So thank you guys for coming. I know a lot of them came from the Fringeworthy folks I met on Facebook, and so I really appreciate that. They're all awesome for doing so. And not calling me on the weird shit I put into the, into the game they love so much. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, I am Mike Leader. I am your Game Master for Fringeworthy. And uh, let's go back to rotating to the cast. Um, tell us a bit about your, tell us your name, a bit about yourself, and what projects you're working on, if you have any, and how we, people can find you on social media if they want to know more about you. We'll start with Chloe, like we did last time. Same run through as before. All right. I am Chloe. You can find me on Instagram, Discord, co-host, any of those at Chloe Serena. I have a Twitch channel at Chloe underscore Serena. Uh, I don't have any particular projects to pump up this time. I'm just excited to be playing this and find out what happens next. All right, Bob. Oh, yeah, I'm Bob. Uh, I don't do social media, and I don't have any projects working right now, so good luck finding me. You do have anything, anything you fun about yourself about you want to talk about? Anything fun about yourself you want to share? Well, uh, no. 
Not that I can think of. Okay. Bob's not fun. Sorry, gang. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon? Uh, hi, I'm I'm Brandon. Uh, I'm a, uh, a game designer and writer. I've been uh, in the game industry for like 30 years. I used to write tabletop games back in the day. I worked on Champions and Traveler and a bunch of other stuff like that. I wrote it. We talked about earlier writing a book for the Air Force. I wrote that for the Stargate RPG a while ago. Uh, I'm a digital game designer these days. I work on video games. I've worked on a lot of different stuff. Uh, Crimson Skies, Halo, uh, Farmville, things like that. And I'm currently working at a company called Hidden Path on a, a Dungeons and Dragons game that will be a AAA third person open world RPG title that will be out in a few years. <laughs> so keep an eye out for that down the road. Awesome. Awesome. Leslie, you want to share with anyone in the group? Um, well, you can find me. I am on social media everywhere, but not particularly active. Um, but at Tupero Esfeo. Um, yes, your dog is ugly. Um, if you want to specifically look at my crafting, um, it is I'm on Instagram as Ugly Dog Crafting or Ugly Dog Crafts. I forget now. Um, I do kind of share what I'm making, although most of what I make is personal. I would would accept commissions if you bribe me enough. Uh, <laughs> but uh. Not too much going on here, except that my cat is trying to eat every single freaking thing on the kitchen table. Um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have the same problem too. I get looking to my to my left because my cat has been at my at my left all the night, asking why why are you sitting in that chair again? I hate when you sit in that chair. Um, fantastic! That was always great to know. I had lots of fun tonight, gang. Thank you very much. I appreciate it making this all happen. Uh, thanks to folks at Stolen Fires, and make sure to get a chance to tune into the station station the station on Twitch regularly. We have games all week long. Uh, shoot, they run a great, they run a fantastic uh, Blade Runner game on Friday nights. I recommend you check it out if you get a chance. And if that's it, I think we'll see you all next week for game number two. Hi, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Take care.